Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Eric's Talk. Again, I'm here with RJ, and he was on the channel last semester. We talked about SJW stuff, and that's actually where he sort of comes from. He's from the channel, The Patriarchy. Um, so, RJ, do you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, uh, the channel is actually called Renaissance Man, but I go by The Patriarchy oh, yeah. on the channel. It's, yeah, it's still called that for but some that reason. You should probably change it. Yeah. I agree. Yeah, I've, I've basically just been procrastinating. It's yeah. just been laziness to not want to change the titles on a bunch of stuff. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, uh, I started YouTube 10 years ago uh, as a kid, making a bunch of stupid videos like everyone else. Yeah. And then I uh, later went on to a partner I was making videos with. And uh, then after they left, I started doing anti-SJW skeptic community videos and uh i made up a character pat ryarchy who uh gets mad that people kiss keep misrepresenting him as the patriarchy and uh it, it, i made fun of ghostbusters the uh the 2016 and then after that the channel kept growing and i went from 38 subs to now today i today i've crossed 2500 yep and you have uh, ghostbusters and, I did that. and donald trump and the new york times to thank for all of it <laughs> Yeah, I have Donald Trump and Paul Feig from Ghostbusters to yeah. thank for all my success. And, and uh, Amy Schumer and Lena yeah. Dunham have also helped just astronomically. Um, so uh, basically, if you're an unattractive female comedian, uh, you know, I love you. Thank you. Um, uh, just just few th I have very specific things I'm very good at uh, apparently talking about. And it's apparently making fun of unattractive female comedians. That's yeah. a talent that I have. So if you're into that sort of thing. I, I like to think I'm the... Yeah, if you're into that very specific thing. Go check out that. Uh, but I also talk about comic books. I also talk about comic books and movies and stuff, too. And Yeah. Movies. That's why it's called Renaissance Man. It's all sorts of things. It was supposed to be a channel with multiple types of things. But then with my... When the other man left, it was just like, Renaissance Man. Yeah. And, um, but... Uh, I'm, I'm trying to build a uh, base again. I actually have two people who collaborate with me a lot now, uh, Scumbag and Sharkfoot. And uh, I'm trying to do more videos with people. So I like to think of the channel. I like to think of the channel as like uh, as like people. Like I, I want to make the channel less about me and more about like uh, a bunch of people talking about all sorts of stuff. So. Yeah. Uh, but I'll probably rebrand it at some point. Either way, you have a spectrum name. of content on there. So... It's worth checking out. Yeah. Um, but what we're going to talk about today... I think so. I think it's fun. Yeah. What we're going to talk about today is YouTube itself, basically some drama controversy. And since it's been a platform that we've been using for years, for you, a decade really, um, yeah, I mean, I don't even know where to start because there's just been a lot of stuff lately. Um, I guess it all started like in the, in the eye of the mainstream with PewDiePie. Um, because he is our messiah anyway, because he has over 50 million subs. Beautiful. He's the most successful man yeah. on our platform, so. Goddamn Swedes. <laughs> yeah. Even the Swedes, uh, <laughs> dominate you too. Yep. <laughs> That's just how it works. It is. Like, there's white guy levels, and like the Swedes, like, right there. It's, mm -hmm. like, it's like, oh, Pootie Pie. At the absolute how top. How dare you. Um, so, <laughs> if you guys don't care about YouTube controversy or drama, if you don't know about it yet, I'll just give you a quick rundown. Basically, PewDiePie did this video where he paid, I don't know what country they were from, but they were basically disenfranchised people to hold up a sign that said, like, kill the Jews or something. Kill, you, kill all Jews. Yeah. Death all Jews. And, um, people sort of blew it out of proportion in the mainstream media because... A lot of people took it out of context, didn't see it as a joke. Um, personally, and we'll get into this in a second, I'm still of the opinion that it's a pretty distasteful thing to do, especially with like poor disenfranchised people to pay them to do something terrible. But um, I want to hear your take on it and just like just see how the cycle sort of spiraled out of control and people... It basically led to people labeling YouTube and PewDiePie, its main star, as Nazis. So here we are. I I fall under that category. I've been I've been labeled Nazi now pretty. Well, yeah, um, I mean, it, it, it used to be the insult was. It used to be a bigot, and stuff like that. And people didn't really call you a Nazi. 
now Nazis the frequent insult. You get called Nazi a lot now, or an alt right, or I get a lot now. Go read Breitbart. I get that insult a lot. Like go read Breitbart, and it's like, yeah, I go read Breitbart every day. He caught me. Um, <laughs> the Pootie Pie thing. I made, I made three videos on it, so I have, yeah. I have a bit of knowledge about the early parts of it. Um, uh, the thing about it was that when Pootie Pie was making that video specifically. Because um, I agree with you, the joke itself is tasteful. He was going on a site that they were saying you could pay people to do anything. Yes. So his whole concept of that video was to go show how ridiculous this whole site was that you could pay people to do anything and how stupid that was. So he kept in airing in ridiculous things, and nobody was doing them. So then he entered in that, like, hold up a song, it's just that's all juice. And then these two guys who, I guess, didn't understand what that meant actually went up and wrote it on a sign. And then PewDiePie's like, oh. And uh, so I, I get this bad joke, but I like to think the commentary on that joke was the idea that the website let that yeah. kind of thing even exist in the first place. And he's showing exactly how that can happen. Like, he's like, I paid these guys five bucks, and this is what you can do on this website. This is a dumb website. Yes. Um, but, uh, and, and his thing, the, the nutty stuff he did, that was to make fun of media labeling him as Nazi. So he was actually making parody exactly. uh, videos, making fun of the fact. And then they actually took those videos that were parodies of him being misrepresented as a Nazi and used them to misrepresent him as a Nazi. Now, this isn't like the John Tron issue that happened recently, where John Tron legitimately said things that were very, I don't want to say racist, but bigoted and kind of nationalistic. And, yes. um, but I think it was more ignorance than it was an actual racist. I think John Tron's just a guy who's trying to get into the political stuff. I agree. And yeah, he was John a video Tron game guy. Person mega star on youtube who has controversy now and even his his well not his game but uh platonic games removed his voice from ukulele as a result and people it really irritated me here as a side note that people just talk about him being removed from ukulele instead of talking about the actual pretty cool looking game that is ukulele <laughs> but yeah. yeah i agree uh but the, the, the thing with Pootie Pie was when I talked about it, it was clearly a hit piece by Wall Street Journal, and there's no other way to label it, because they took, like, five videos, they they shit on the contest, they wrote this whole thing, they went to Pootie Pie's sponsors, and they said, hey, look at these videos he made, do you want to be part of this? Which is what they did with uh, the ad companies now, that the videos are getting monetized, they went and found these very specific videos and said, hey, look, your ads are on these racist videos, do you really want this? And uh, basically, uh, Pootie Pie, after he got fired, made a brilliant video defending himself. I thought he couldn't have said anything better. And since that video, I've become a bigger fan of his content. I used to hate his content. Um, but now I think he's actually become kind of an awesome proponent for free speech. And uh, I made a video making fun of J.K. Rowling because she was talking about it. And she clearly didn't yes. even know who Pootie Pie was. And it was a very embarrassing moment for J.K. Rowling, who I, oh, I do like quite a bit. Well, I mean, I uh, but it's like, J.K., you sound right. like it run your mouth on Twitter about stuff you don't fully understand, but I guess when you're a celebrity, that temptation's always there, and people will listen to you and support you. Well, well I always, I, you know, the J.K. Rowling thing, it was so funny, because I was like, this is the first time in my life you sounded like an old lady, because <laughs> you're legitimately talking about something you have no concept of. Like, I doubt you yeah. even know the fuck Pootie Pie. It's like, it's like when Pepe the Frog became an issue last year with the Hillary Clinton stuff, and it was like, you don't know who Pepe the Frog is. You have no idea who Pepe the Frog is, yeah. um, and they still don't know who Pepe is. Shia LaBeouf still doesn't get it. How many flags does that guy have to get taken from him before he gets it? The Watch Frogs are coming. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, I love the Watch Frogs. You know, praise Keck. Um, we, uh, well, that's the thing. It's The Pootie Pie thing directly led to a subculture blowing up of parody, ideological. That's where Keck came from. Um, it was all because you know Keck was an Egyptian god, and then he was a frog god, so then they used Pepe, and now they're they're making fun of religion, social justice culture, the media, and all that because now when you get labeled a Nazi, they're like, yeah, of course I'm a Nazi. Look at my moves. You know, it's they're making people embrace bad things because that's the only way you can fight people writing ridiculous hit pieces about you being a Nazi when you're not yeah. a Nazi. The only way you can combat that is to be a, a you know to, is to do the producers. Is to, is to make fun of Nazism, how ridiculous it is. But like, what's great about Blazing Saddles is because Mel Brooks shows you how absurd racism is through the idea of a movie being absurd, like how Hollywood's absurd. 
Yeah. That's why at the end of the movie it quits being a film and breaks out because he's showing you it's just a movie, and that's basically the concept of racism and the N word. It's like it's it's really nothing. It's just something we give this meaning and it has nothing. It's like a movie. And uh, I think I, it's funny that happened in the seventies, and you can really make that movie today. And uh, I don't know when we got pussified, when we were okay with like going, oh, PewDiePie's a Nazi. That must be true. Yeah. Um, without thinking for five seconds, that sounds stupid. Um, and why did it take this long for this information to come out if he was a Nazi? It's like the Milo Yiannopoulos thing. I didn't like what he said, but why did they wait like two years later to release that stuff after he got popular, after the Berkeley thing? Nobody gave a shit back when it happened. Yeah, that's all it was. And I don't like that. I don't like the setting on a story crap. Yeah. Well, I mean, that goes into something that are people, like, not smart enough now to realize how dumb they're sounding? Like, no, I think most people do, especially these media professionals, right? And um, there's these layers of irony here, like, all throughout this PewDiePie thing, a couple that I want to address specifically. Like, at first you said that PewDiePie did this as a commentary, which is true because he saw this website and was like, wow, this is stupid. Let's see how stupid it can be. Um, in retrospect, probably not the most well-planned joke, um, but like that's where the intention was, and you sort of have to like realize that. I don't know how you couldn't realize that if you, in fact, watched the entire video or set of videos or whatever. Um, which you're rep If you're reporting on them, you'd think someone would do. Um, so there's that level of irony. Yeah. Then there's the level of irony about him dressing up as Hitler or Nazi or whatever. And he did that as a response to being labeled that. But then people actually took it completely out of context again. And just for their narrative or because they're stupid or ignorant or whatever. And they were like, oh, look, he is a Nazi. He's confirming it. And my, your, my favorite quote of yours ever, you just said it, is, of course I'm a Nazi. Look at my memes. <laughs> yeah, I think I that really sums up the whole look situation at my, here. Look at my dank memes, because you know, I mean, I go out of my way to make like Nazi jokes or make memes about Nazi stuff now because it's you know people get mad. And it's like, listen, Nazis are ridiculous. They're a joke. They've been a joke in this culture for a long time. We don't take yeah. them seriously. So I'm not going to take them seriously. I'm not going to take your Nazi label because the Nazi party's gone. It doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> that's, the, that's what I don't you get. Can't just like, lay what, I don't know. If calling somebody a bigot or a racist or an asshole, to me, has way more weight because we actually still take those terms seriously. We're like, oh, shit, maybe I should reevaluate myself and be like, um, yeah, but, like, people use this trigger word Nazi, and it's like, what do you even – you're not even saying anything by saying that word. Are you saying I legitimately oh. believe in – the purging of society and genocide. Like, what are you even saying? No, I don't get why people it's use such it. It's such a specific thing. Yeah, like, it's a, like they don't realize like Nazi was a specific thing. There was the Nazi party. Um, like if you want to call someone a fascist or something, sure. But when you say Nazi, yeah. you're being very specific. It's like it's like okay, you can't call, like when they call a Jewish guy a Nazi. It's like that doesn't work. You can't say that there wasn't a bunch of Jewish Nazis. What are you talking about? That's like, did you you didn't read my comp? That goes against the whole Nazi kill <laughs> Like it's yeah. It's like it's like with Islam. You can't have a discussion about Islam and its ideology without people calling you a racist towards Muslims and stuff. And you can't talk about a religion in the text and Sharia law and the political uh, correlation with Islam in certain countries mm -hmm. without getting like you know you get labeled a bigot or a racist or something. It's like that's ridiculous. And it's so that's weird. Completely too. ridiculous. I should be able to talk about it. It's like the whole thing is a study on it communication is. and what the hell are we doing with our own communication, our own language. It's like, yeah, we're making this word synonymous with asshole or bigot or whatever. We want it to mean really because it, it sounds like it should have impact. But in reality, for some people, it's just like, huh, that's a joke. But the sad thing is, too, it's not just like random idiots or even random journalists who actually have a significant platform that are doing this kind of thing. I mean, it's also YouTube to an extent as well, because first of all, as, as my first point, I can guarantee that this podcast, because we're talking about controversial subject matter, I can't monetize this. It will be under review indefinitely because I'm a small channel. And um, yeah, yeah, so uh, it, it's well, not even like we're not being Nazis or racist or like whatever, but because we even say those words, we're obviously doing bad things.
that's how YouTube is working now, from what I understand. Well, even the word atheist is having trouble right now on YouTube. Just the word atheist. Um, Why are all these like, things synonymous having... with bad? You know, like, I don't... I, I... Monetize no, atheist is not synonymous with bad. Pepsi doesn't want their ad on my but... video because we talked about something that's actually newsworthy and should be talked about. Sorry? I don't... I don't get it. Pepsi. The soda of Islam. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, there you mm. go. See, he's, he's an Islamist. He's got a Pepsi. He's got a... Nazi juice. Delicious. Yeah, Nazi juice. Mm, <laughs> Nazi this juice. This is a joke. Like, this is a joke. Like, if really. I was PewDiePie and I said Pepsi's this, really and drank Pepsi juice. and said it was Nazi juice, I would be on the front page of the Wall Street Journal, apparently. What is Well, what's world? funny about this ad thing... When... What's funny about the ad thing, I laugh at it, is that back when, like, when I still had a lot of ads in my videos, like, I made fun of that Audi commercial that, about the pay gap, because they, they got, somebody called them out on Twitter and was like, well, so you guys pay your female employees less? And then Audi's like, well, when, when you factor in everything, they make about the same, and you're like, wait a minute, then, then why do you put in your commercial that women and men get paid differently, and then you're on here explaining it? So I made a video about it, and all that video, the ads that popped up a lot, people told me was that Audi commercial. And then I did a video on the Women's March, and it was making fun of a lot of things about it, and a lot of the, the ads on it were for the Women's March. <laughs> like, but I thought, that's cool. Advertise your thing on my thing, right? So yeah. people could see your side, yeah, and then I'll make fun of it, and people can see my side, and then they cool. can make their choice on it. I don't know how that happened, though. That's so confusing. I, I think it's, that's the thing, it's just random, it's just tagged, like, because I was talking yeah. about oh, Audi, yeah. they probably thought, oh, we should put an ad on this. And, but they don't realize I'm making fun of that commercial. And then Audi's one of the companies that pulls their ads off YouTube now. And I think exactly. that had – because everyone talked about that commercial, and it just ripped it apart. It's like that Pepsi commercial right now that they pulled. Um, whenever you do social justice stuff in a marketing campaign, we've seen consistently it backfires horribly. Backfired with Bud Light, backfired with Pepsi now. And yeah. um, whenever they try to like push a feminist angle or – it's just people who buy soda or Pepsi or, or, or beer. So they don't care. They don't well, want to I mean, hear that it, when they're watching a commercial. Yeah. It, it makes rational That's the main sense issue. that if you're trying to sell this brown liquid that you want everyone to drink, right? I don't understand why you would t make it political. Why make this political and you're, like, you're obviously going to alienate some audience, even if you think you're morally in the right or whatever. Like, Why even raise that kind of question if your end goal is <laughs> wanting people to drink and buy this? You know what's the best quote ever from Michael Jordan is uh, when they asked him why didn't he endorse Barack Obama more when in 08, and he said because Republicans buy Nike Air Jordans too. And uh, yeah. that's my thing. Are you acting like people on my channel who may lean more, let's say, right wing? Let's say that's my channel naturally, right? Yeah. Let's say they lean more right wing. You think they don't want to buy products the same way that some SJW does on a different video? Like, you think my audience doesn't drink Pepsi or Coke or would buy an Audi? Or I mean, really, like, it yeah, it's I don't like think that would change. It's like making everything political. I mean, why does everything have to be political? Why can't there be different avenues of life? Why can't there be the YouTube video you're watching and the advertisement that's trying to, like, buy your time? Like, why can't those run co current, concurrent? They don't have to, like, be at odds with each other. I don't really get it. Well, like, my video, the Bud Light video I made, I got 125,000 hits. That was my biggest video ever. I'm sure that video helped Bud Light. Like, I made yeah. fun of Amy Schumer and Seth Rogen about the, their campaign going down, but, like, Hell, that video didn't hurt that Bud Light sales. Hell, video about Bud Light. Like, again, like you yeah, said, I, I, it's free. It's the yeah, marketplace I didn't. of ideas. And, like, anybody who drinks Bud Light or doesn't drink Bud Light, like, I got some comments from people like, yeah, I'm not drinking Bud Light ever again after watching this, so, you know, there's that. But, I, what, like, five people write that? At 125,000 people, like, I don't think anyone stopped drinking Bud Light or drink more Bud Light because of the video. Yeah. So at the end of the day, that's insignificant, you know. It's like well, if, if HBO doesn't have commercials, right, but if I watch Game of Thrones and then midway through Game of Thrones a commercial came on, I wouldn't think, oh, well, you guys are into incest. There's a, a commercial on the show with uh, Jamie Lannister and Cersei, and they, they, they're incestuous. So you support that's a that. Perfect I wouldn't point. think that. Yeah, that's, that's a great stupid. point. Because the ads are running uh, over the content. Why does that mean those ads support that content? Like TV doesn't act that way. But YouTube does. It's weird. 
Well, like, HBO doesn't advertise for descriptions, but don't think advertisers wouldn't love to be on Game of Thrones. Holy shit. Don't yeah. think, like, and Game of Thrones would get huge ad endorsement. I mean, God, there'd be every five minutes there'd be a cut to, like, buy a car. Uh, yeah. But the thing I hate is you said politics is everywhere. A recent video I made was about James Corden and how I hate his show because I think it's the laziest comedy on the planet to bring celebrities in and sing with you in a car. And, uh, and uh, my whole thing about it is that him, Steve Colbert, who I don't hate or anything, but uh, Seth Meyers, all of them, every night their shows, because I'm a big fan of late night talk shows. I've been watching them since I was a kid. It's yes. so political now. You cannot watch a night without it being about Donald Trump. It's been every night for like the whole last six. I mean, it's nuts. It's like they don't have any other sketches or concepts. They're spending 99% of the time on Trump stuff. It's like, I don't care anymore. It's like Saturday Night Live. Stop. I don't want to see another Donald Trump sketch. It was funny the fifth time. It's not funny the twelfth time. Yeah. Like, totally it's not that, that funny to see Alec Paul. It's like, it's, it's done. Like, move on. Write a new character. Write a new joke. And then make fun of Trump if something new happens. But then they just keep yeah. telling this. It's like, how much are you going to help on this Russia thing? He just bombed Syria. I'm pretty sure he's not Putin's puppet. Um, I, yeah. I'm sick of hearing about this Russia. It's like so annoying. It's like it's been the last six months to keep hearing about Russia. It's like, oh my god, there's stuff actually going on. And we're still freaking talking about like we're in the Cold War. Yeah. Like, and, and it's driving nice me nuts because way... that's the narrative. I, I, yeah, I totally see that. And that's a nice way to rope it back into the YouTube thing because there is actual stuff going on, right? And we're, we're, I don't know why the Wall Street Journal specifically is like the center of this discussion other than YouTube because I feel like it's media in general, but Wall Street Journal just feels like it has to be the one, I guess. There is a single reporter at the Wall Street Journal who only covers Google-related stuff, which includes YouTube. Like mm -hmm. what? That's his. That's his job. So essentially, his job is to like watch YouTube a lot as well. And it just blows my mind. Like, it's like they're looking for stories so hard that they're gonna find stories that aren't even there, and they're gonna talk about them because um, I know H three H three Productions recently had the controversy with YouTube and oh, it, YouTube is racist because it has these ads over these videos, but, and, and at the end of the day, he sort of jumped to conclusions too, but there, there's still, like, suspicion permeating the entire thing as yeah, to... that sadly backfired really bad with Ethan. I really hated that happened, because that hurt YouTube as a whole. Yeah. Because that just discredited a lot of us who... And I don't blame him, but, but he just, I, he jumped the gun because he was so excited to get the info. He didn't, like, spend that extra, like, 20 minutes looking into it. Yeah, And uh, it would have made his video so much better. There's still reason for suspicion, even after he apologized, because there's still, like, the evidence of, oh, this guy found two different ads with the same view count. Like, I still don't understand how that adds up. Well, my issue with it is even beyond all that, like I say Ethan's argument, really, I think that was a pointless video to make in the sense that he was just trying to find something to discredit him. Because honestly, I don't think the argument needs to go past the point of you're going on a channel with 5 billion hits a day and you're taking like three or four videos and you're trying to say this is an example of the entire platform. And that's just yeah. well, I mean, ridiculous. That's and I don't what think they did with PewDiePie logically, as well, right? I mean, yeah, how can you go past that YouTube. point? Yeah. And he had hundreds of videos, and they found very specific ones, because 90% of his videos are him playing a video game talking to, like, kids. And they found very specific ones when his content kind of changed. And then they labeled him a Nazi. And now YouTube's getting it. I mean, I cover the stories all the time. You go to, you'll get, you'll read an article in a major news publication that legitimately has headlines that says something like, protect your kids from alt-right gamers on YouTube. Protect your kids from fake media outlets. And I go, okay, so you're telling them to listen to CNN, who I cover all the time and all the time, basically is just preaching propaganda. And yet you're telling them don't watch my stuff, even though I pretty much just sent facts and then give my opinion and then let people have their opinion. But that's, yeah. But they're saying that I, you know, like, they're saying people like me are trying to push propaganda that were just because YouTube, somehow this happened. YouTube is a very anti SJW platform, even the big channels. Do not, do not like PC like culture, and, and, and they're saying iDubs doesn't like it, H3H3 doesn't like it, PewDiePie doesn't like it, 
Um, um, even this guy I'm a big fan of, Rob Dyke, who does horror videos and stuff, he just started, he started defending stuff about that movie as Split because it was getting criticized by people for not representing mental illness well. And uh, he, he came out and said, this is so stupid. And I'm noticing that even the big YouTubers, they look at MTV News' subscriber count, look at BuzzFeed's subscriber count, look at the dislike-to-like ratio on those videos, and then go look at uh, a video by, like, a star of a cod. It's not even close. And, yeah. uh... It, that, that's the main issue is that YouTube is not a pro liberal, pro mainstream media platform. It's just well, not. It's not what the community went that way. You want to know um, my theory about more... that? Because it just just came to my mind. Because I personally don't like PC culture when it's like abused and overused. And I know you don't, obviously. Um, so do do you think? Here's what I think. Like the anim the anonymity of YouTube maybe like actually protects you and like lets you say how you really feel and express that through maybe not words but like likes and subscriptions and stuff like that um because that's like there's not pc or anti-pc on youtube like everybody's on youtube so what would make sense to me is like oh this is what generally people think because they think it's bullshit and maybe people generally do want the truth and not this like the pc filtered bullshit like um one of my favorite right. videos that right. Ethan um, made fun of, like, months ago, was um, this woman took a taxi, right? And there was a Hawaiian bobble figure oh, on the, lift the taxi car driver's yeah. dash. And I'm going like, to put you on Gawker. Yeah, she basically tried to make that, having a, having a freaking tourist souvenir or whatever. She tried to make it a hate crime. Like, that's how she reacted. It, it was, like, insane. And I'm just like, what is this? Like, who would not like Ethan's video roasting this? Because that's just so stupid and trivial. I, I, I don't even, I don't get it. Well, the issue is, is that, like, with the MTV White Guys video, which I did a parody of, hey, Black Guys 2017, because the whole video was, like, the most racist video of all time. It's a bunch of people sitting there telling you that you're a white person and that you're bad for these specific things and you need to fix these things by being a white person, which is them saying you are inferior to other races, which is the definition of racism. They're saying, oh, as yeah. white people, you are you are making mistakes here. Oh, and, uh, can't be and they took that video down people, twice. You forgot. Oh, I know. It's just it's a systemic problem that only exists in a power struggle, and if we don't have that power benefit, we can't be racist. I was I've debunked that argument like twelve times in videos. I mean, if the dear white people trail then call out. it a different word because I'm a language guy. If you're looking at the actual definition of a word, it's it's exactly what you said it is. Like thinking an yeah. entire race, a huge population of people, is better or worse or whatever. That's racism. So. Well, the problem is you demean the words. When you say people are racist because they benefit from a systemic racism or they're sexist because they benefit from it, then you're labeling people that aren't racist or sexist, which yeah. I think are and learned behaviors. Yeah, and people get upset and they don't want accident. to, like, be on your side. They don't want to listen. They get upset because you're being made the enemy by people you don't even know. Well, Hillary Clinton's biggest mistake when she attacked Donald Trump for his stuff wasn't that she attacked Trump. It's that when she attacked him, it was like she was attacking every single guy in the country that may have ever said or done or felt like Donald Trump. And you yes. can't do that. You oh. can't, like, tell millions of people that you're a piece of shit, sexist pig, and you need to vote for me because I'm a woman, and this guy's terrible. Because you could say that guy's bad, but when it's, like, you know, the whole reflection of the country, like, Trump supporters are deplorable, yes. that's, uh, that's basically just telling people they're pieces of shit. That's what you're saying. You're like, you're a piece of shit. And it's Honestly. like, uh, I never... I never remember Donald Trump saying that about Hillary supporters. He just said Hillary no. Clinton sucked way, especially in the debates. Yeah. The debates, his strategy was focused on her and delegitimize her. Her strategy was like delegitimize his whole movement, which, well, yeah, which obviously backfired, backfired horribly. When that they basket thought it was small, I think. I don't think quote, they realized how big it was. Yeah, no, she didn't. When that basket of deplorables quote came out, like first of all, I was like, "How stupid are you? Like, do you want people to vote for you? Because you're not going to get anyone." over to your side by insulting people like that it was just one of the biggest political blunders i think i've ever seen in my lifetime like that one i mean she acted that way a lot but she really oh yeah she really brought it to the forefront of who she was by saying it in such a 
such a way. Like, I will never forget Basket of Deplorables. Like, even the vocabulary yeah. is objectively really good because it's stuck in my head uh, for half a year. I mean, yeah, it's, it's so Well, crazy. she tried to combat Donald Trump's buzzwordiness with her buzzword, but her buzzword came off so much more negative than his. I don't know how yeah. it happened. Like, it was he comes up with though. these buzzwords and that. But we make jokes about his stuff later. We're like, hey, grab by the pussy, man. Hombres. And then Hillary Clinton, it's like, deplorable. Oh, my yeah. God. Um, Some guy argued with me the other day about this. He said, he said, I know Hillary Clinton's an idiot, but he goes, you know, that was the most honest moment of the election when she called these people deplorable. And I was like, I was like, I was like well, uh, you saying that, congratulations, Trump 2020. Because if people still have that fucking mindset by the time we come to 2020, there is no way a Democrat's winning because you have to drop that everyone who voted for Trump's a racist crap because there's like 60 million people. And if you think America has 60 million rampant white supremacists, you are insane because the whole country would be falling apart right now if yeah. there was like 61 million white supremacists who wanted to kill off all brown people. Yeah. Uh, that doesn't mean I like Trump or that I support a lot of the stuff he does, but exactly. that doesn't mean that you burning people and protesting and holding up free speech and – censoring people who are pro-Trump uh, and, and reporting falsely on the news. I mean, like the Susan Rice thing, the media won't report honestly about that, like CNN, they won't even talk about it. And it's like, this is a big story. This is like a really big story. Like, this this could be a big, big thing for Trump's party, and you won't hear about that. Yet you'll always hear about, well, Putin has got Trump in his pocket, yet the only thing we ever hear is that's intro from intelligence agencies. They don't give us the evidence, and then they can't ever show proof that that's why people voted for Donald Trump over Hillary Clinton. Yeah. Because if the whole polling system was that 90% of people were going to vote for Hillary and Trump had a small base, and then that didn't come true, then you're making a big leap telling me Russia had that much to do with it. I think that's an, a bizarre exaggeration that they convinced 60 million people how they were going to vote. Yeah. Um, because they released information that was true about the Democratic Party rigging their elective primary. Um, that part confuses me, too. I I don't like for government interfering, but I also don't think Trump directly, for my, my idea, I don't think he, and when they take it, like when a senator talks to someone in Russia, they blow it up in the news, even though that's always happened. You know, every administration yeah. has people talking to Russia. And uh, it's kind of confusing. They, every time someone on Trump's team does it, they're like, Oh, they're talking to Russia. And it's like, you can't report the news like that. That's hyper, that's hyper, uh, uh, hyperbole. Yeah. Um, and hyperbole is the news today. Everything is how fast, you know, exactly. Ethan was a, was a suffering of that. He stuck in hyperbole. He's like, Oh, I got to report on this. We got to shut these guys down. And he made the mistake of not like setting up a better video. Cause he still could have made that video with the better research. But mm -hmm. instead, Wall Street Journal gets to write an article that same day and go, well, look at the fake news on YouTube from uh, H3H3, and uh, it just sucks. It just blows up in our faces, and they demonetize us, and Google doesn't seem to give a shit. Um, yeah. I mean, they're demonetizing guys like Phil DeFranco, who's one of the most objective, least offensive guys on the whole platform. Um, he has like four or five pages of stuff to monetize. Um, well, I, know, I know PewDiePie has like a bunch of his stuff to monetize. Can Google treat and us? I can just like it. Can Google treat us like ten percent as well as they treat their like actual employees? That'd be cool. Like, uh. no, it's weird that yeah, Google treats their employees like fucking like angels, and then how they treat the people who work for them on YouTube. Like, technically, I'm a Google employee because I get a paycheck monthly from Google. Yeah, I've made you know I've made over a thousand dollars on my YouTube account, so I've got over a thousand dollars in money from Google. I have to you know put that in my taxes at the end. You're like, I got this money from Google, and. Uh, yeah. And yeah, they could give a fuck about me because I'm sure they made more money than that off that return. If I got a thousand dollars, then I'm sure they made a lot more off of it <laughs> than I did because that's probably in total what I've made. And uh, they, they probably, I mean, yeah. And that, that's what ticks me off. It's like, okay, people like to watch my videos. I can upload content daily or every other day. Um, and why don't they? I had this idea the other day. It'd be kind of cool if instead of trying to have this fight, why don't the corporations just buy? The YouTube accounts, like, if you went to a guy like h 3 and you said, we'll pay you a month, yearly salary to to sponsor, like, you have to talk about Pepsi every video, but you still get to do h 3 content, and we'll totally protect you, and you're a business partner with this company now. Yeah. That makes more sense to me than this thing where they're fighting the platforms, fighting the content creators. Like, yeah. do you think the people who make Netflix shows are fighting with Netflix when they have, no, they're talking to them. YouTube will not talk to even the top content creators on this platform. 
They do not communicate with them. PewDiePie has a hard time communicating with YouTube. He makes twelve million dollars a year. Yeah. I mean, that's what. What more do you need? The guy. Every time he uploads a video, gets like H three H three. Every time he uploads a video, it's pretty much guaranteed a million hits. So that means you have a guy that's guaranteed to bring in a million people every time he uploads something. Why don't you want to work with him and make money off? I don't. I just don't get it. That's, just, that's insane. Like to me, it's just insane. I'd be like, yeah, media. I'd go. You could hire that guy, and he would get fucked over and make less money, and you could make more profit. Yeah. You're actually letting the YouTubers manipulate the system with the algorithms, and I think it's blown up in their faces because YouTube, they didn't. They, I think they poorly structured the monetization system. I think from the beginning, I think they gave it out too easily, too early. They didn't set like limits on certain things. Like, now they're trying to set a limit where if your channel has 10,000 overall views, then you can get monetized. See, I think that's a good rule. Because 10,000 overall views isn't a lot for your whole channel's history. Yeah. So if you can pass that, then you can get your videos monetized. Because a lot of channels on YouTube, they may have one video that's got like 6,000 hits, and they didn't make any other video, and that video got monetized. I get that. Like, that's pretty much a waste of Google's time. Yeah. So give it to the channels that consistently upload every day, like you do or I do. Yeah. We should have ad revenue because we make videos all the time. But I don't think somebody who doesn't who doesn't make videos, basically. Yeah, don't give it to them. F them. I agree. I think there should be, you know, the time you put into your YouTube videos and yeah. stuff like that. Like, and how much, how many people you bring in, obviously. But uh, there should be something to said that you're basically doing labor, unpaid labor. Yeah. I mean, because I mean, you're spending hours editing. And find, I mean, I spend three hours having to research videos. I don't make anything. I mean, hours reading fucking awful articles on everyday feminism or, or Polygon or something, and I don't want to read that shit. And, uh, you know, they don't, now they want to tell me, we don't want you to make any money off that. Yeah. Because I was still making some decent cash on the side. But now it's like, well, and, and it's discouraging. It's like, well, shit, I don't want to make videos because you're telling me there's no way to grow. Well, like yeah, you said, I mean, starting a new YouTuber right now sucks. Like, being a new YouTuber sucks in 2017. It does. I mean, even if you are doing well and you're you're growing and you're consistent, like, with every problem, with everything that monetization does somewhat right or logical, um, it does more things, like, illogical. Because you're, you're constantly up in the air, um, either for this, like, PC thing or copyright, you don't even know if you're going to be able to be monetized a lot of the time. I mean, even if you use, like, we talked about this before that we started recording, if you use things that are within fair use, you're likely going to get screwed out of your first day of views and your first day of money, therefore, um, because you can't fight the system fast enough um, because it, it does, it's not innocent until proven guilty. It's guilty until proven innocent on YouTube because... They automatically assume that you're doing wrong on behalf of the big corporation or whatever. So they give them the money until you can prove it otherwise. But once you have finally done that, your your view cycle for the video is done. So all the money's gone. So copyright's an issue. And then, like I said, for and my they don't channel, respond until like thirty days. Like the WB, like if they yeah. copyright claim your video. They're not going to respond to your appeal until like the last day of the month. So they're going to get all your views for that month. Exactly. Then they're going to give you another claim. Then you got to respond again. Then they'll wait another month, and then you might get your video back, but it's been out for two months. Oh, it's not even worth. And they got all the hits. Your Justice League trailer review in two two months from now, probably hardly anyone, because it's not top. No, no one's going to give a shit. Yeah, exactly. It's only relevant for like a week or a month. Yeah, and you're going to get. That's that's what happened. It's it's crazy. And you're going to get a kick out of this in terms of the under-review thing, because I'm sure you've had videos that have been under-reviewed because of the subject matter, right? I have several right now. I have like yeah. a dozen right now that are under-review. Yeah, and they're still under-review. Um, Nothing's happening? Oh, uh, I got one approved, a PewDiePie one I made, but every other one, uh, pretty much got, I got like three or four of my videos after the they got demonetized permanently. And, oh, so um, you, you actually lost and they were, in most accounts. Yeah, I lost... Yeah, and they never tell you what it is specifically, because, you know, yeah, YouTube's it's so not a big. Trial. They never it's tell like, you, like, we decide. We're a judge, jury, and executioner on this under-review thing. Well, tell me, what word did I say? What what image did I use? Because I won't use it. Like, I wouldn't. Yeah. Like, if you told me, you know, don't say this word or this, but they don't let you know the rules very well, so you kind of just, you're, you're like, you know, you're, throwing, you're putting your dick into something. You don't know if it's going to grind it up or something. It's and, gonna uh, be that's up in that's the air. Like, Yeah. Yeah, and they, I no, I've 
I, all my women's march videos got demonetized, and everyone else in this community all got their videos demonetized that made women's march. If you made a negative video on the women's march, your video got demonetized. If you talk about Islam, your video gets demonetized. If you talk about guns, and that's a religion. your video like, gets what demonetized. Is... I don't know. You get uh, you get demonetized if you talk about a lot of specific things right now. Like I won't put Islam in the title of my video. See, that's um, actually yeah. A... That's in a really weird roundabout way. That's actually super conservative because if they're saying it you is. can't say the word Islam in a video, then they're basically saying we think you're talking bad about it because we're just going to automatically assume that's how all Americans work and that's how we work. Because I mean, that, it's sort of like it's saying that like that's not inherently it, it's, a it's bad true. thing. Why can't it be monetized? And by well, who, my like, women's march video, is Starbucks going to give a shit? My, my, is, Pepsi gonna give a shit. No, like, I know. Ah, <sighs> well, like, uh, well, here's the thing. If Wall Street Journal would give a shit, if uh, someone apparently, here's the yeah, they would yeah, they would get. Well, here's the thing. Like, it's clearly I I don't like you said. I don't think these people are dumb enough to not know this is stupid. That's why I think there's an agenda because I can't imagine that this stupid. I don't no, think Wall exactly. Street Journal is that stupid. Yeah, I said I, that. I like, don't think these people are so. Idiot. Yeah, I don't think people are so stupid they're sitting there going like, gee, I don't know what this joke means. Um, I think they manipulate it on purpose because they want to discredit YouTube for whatever fucking reason. Because they think YouTube's competition, but I actually think both can exist at the same time. I think you can have mainstream media and journalism, and I think you can have YouTube I agree. Uh, community. and I think Dude, you can have like, both simultaneously, but for some reason, half fighting. Half YouTube is centered around talking about mainstream media, I swear to God. Like, All my videos, the sources are from mainstream outlets. I'm yeah. sourcing their outlets We're talking to about talk about this stuff. So. Or journalism, or video games, or something. Like, yeah, I mean, yeah, it, it just, all just helps. Works it together. literally helps your website. Like, the only time you get discredited is if you suck, and that's the free market. I'm sorry, like, Lacey Green's not popular anymore. That's because everyone made videos pointing out her bullshit, and now she doesn't have her own yet. BuzzFeed used to be the biggest site on the internet, now they're a joke. And that's yeah. because they were a crap site. It's what happens. It's naturally what happens. If we're not allowed to criticize yeah. bad content and bad creators and bad companies and stuff, then what's the fucking point? Like, really, what's like, the fucking point of doing yeah. this? And YouTube well, I can't is make a video supposed to be a free market. market of speech. But they're trying to control it because, A, it's lucrative, or, B, they just think people are triggered if you if you make videos that don't align with these imaginary standards because they well, they don't even tell you or communicate what they are like so it's impossible. I don't know what they are because the videos that got demonetized are some of my least offensive videos <laughs> yeah I don't know uh, yeah like I was I my ad revenue thing like when you look at it it was usually like monthly it kind of stays around seventy dollars ish a little lower you know you know it stays around that average cost the month how your hits go you mm -hmm. can average out your hits that's how people who don't do YouTube the way people who don't do it they don't know like you have kind of like an algorithm to show you what you're doing, and you kind of base your video performance off that and how you upload and all that stuff, and it's, it's kind of something you have to pay attention to. Yeah. So, you know, you know what your money's at. So I look at my monthly thing for the last few months, and it stays around a certain number. So you know, okay, I can reach that certain number, and I want to try to improve on that number. Since the new demonetization thing, they're not bad, that number now that used to hover around 70 is now hovering way under 30. Yeah. So that just shows you how big of a decrease adds, because it's not the hits are down, the hits are up. It's the ads or less. I used to, you know, because I make 10 minute videos, so it used to be a few ads. Now I think I have one ad on some videos, and um, I ask people who are subscribers to me because they watch the, the ads to help me out. Like, you know, they, they take their ad back off. Just, you know, because I think that's the best yeah. way you can help a YouTuber is maybe not donating to their Patreon, is to watch a whole video with your ad blocker off and watch the ads because then that goes to them directly. Yeah. And uh, if all of your people did that, you make a lot, of, you make a lot more money. Um, but RJ, but, obviously, yeah. you're a Nazi that, who creates memes, so you deserve $40 less per month. <laughs> yeah, I have too many rare Pepe's. Um, well, that, yeah. that's the second thing is that you want to kind of try to get to that point where you make enough money off YouTube that it's kind of like financially beneficial to do it. Like if yeah. I was making $500 a month off YouTube, that'd be enough money to warrant doing it a little bit more with what I do currently because that's enough extra money to be like, okay – you know, but they've made that impossible now. So now I'm like, okay, well, I'm never going to make like three or four videos a day because there's just no reason to. And it's not because I'm greedy. I don't have the time. Oh, and yeah. I'm not going to get compensated the time that I'm going to put into it. I'm going to put way too much time into it. 
and I don't have that amount of time if I'm not getting some money. Like, if they give me $500 for all the time, I'd be like, all right, cool, I'm getting paid for it. It's, like, working. But, you know, I mean, I've made, like, six videos this week, and I've spent, like, God, I've probably spent 12, 15 hours of last week on videos. And, uh, you know, it's it's just, it gets stressful, because you don't know if your videos are going to make money. You already have the stress of wanting it to get hit and wanting people to like it. That already exactly. exists. Yeah. And then you it's have like, to add the stress of see if it gets seen. You don't have normal competition to worry about. <laughs> you also have the platform itself that should be supporting you if you are a good content creator and a good person, which... That's usually how it actually is because people don't support people who are outright dicks that they know of. Um, but yeah. no, like you have to compete. I don't know one that. popular YouTuber that's an outright racist or sexist, like that's super popular. Exactly. I can't think of anyone that's like happen. outright. A- like that just do- – society <laughs> deems that that won't happen because there are just things that are well, generally accepted as good or bad. So, like, the whole PewDiePie thing, like, oh, all of his subscribers, 50 million people must be racist, too, or... That's where the comment threads start spinning, and it's just, like, goes out of control, and it's just, like, this is this is not grounded in reality anymore. This is just complete, utter, baseless speculation, and it's so worthless. It's not worth anyone's time. Not the reporters or the YouTubers. I get scared, dude. I don't post my videos on my Facebook. I don't, because I know I have friends on my Facebook... That would think I was a Nazi or white supremacist because they're friends of mine that I've known for, I'd say, ten years. Some of them, and the way they write on Facebook is insane stuff. I mean, they legitimately believe there's a mil- there's probably fifty million, forty million white supremacists rising in this country. They all they didn't know what the alt right was a year ago. Now they're all obsessed with it, and they all think they're experts on it now, um, even yeah. though they never talked about it before. Um, now everyone's an expert on the Electoral College, even though I never heard any of them bring it up to me before, and they never took a civics class, I guess, because they all bring up the vote. I'm like, well, you know if you're at school and get taught how this works? Yeah. You're acting like you don't know how it works now. Because I yeah, knew how it worked Facebook when I was a kid. Game. Well, that's the problem. Social media, remember when people like used to just write posts about their day, and now somebody writes a fucking, like, they think, it's like, I always say, we're living in this pseudo-symposium, like, everyone thinks they're a philosopher now, and they think they're yeah. sitting around, like, Socrates and shit and talking, and they're like, oh, man, I can't hear what I have to say about Syria. And it's like, no, not really, you're going to say the exact same thing everyone else is saying. No, I, I want to see pictures of all. your dog, or what you ate today. It's true, honestly. I do. I do want to see your dog. I would love to see your dog, instead of reading, <laughs> like... You you taking one thing out of the news, your biased news source that you read, and then telling me this is a fact now, and then if I disagree with you, I mean they go crazy because I'll tell somebody will post an article from something well, and they're a friend of mine, and I'll be like, I think we've all I'll be like, had the Teen Titans thing, Facebook too, like yeah, the Teen Titans thing was my big one was that oh, I made this video shit. debunking right. the whole idea that Teen Titans was sexist, that it got canceled because of that. And this is some internet rumor, and I would and I would research it. I go, maybe this is true. And it, they had the wrong guy, like they said, who did it. It wasn't an interview yeah. with Paul Dean. It was an interview with us. And uh, and it was a different show. It had nothing to do with it. And I posted that that source to these people, and they all went all after me and said, no, that's basically the same thing, just with different wording. I go, no, the wording up there is saying that this had to do with because their whole argument was trying to say about how kids. There's the gender norms in marketing. And here's the issue with this. They do marketing research. The reason they market stuff to girls and boys is because boys like to buy certain things more and girls like to buy certain things more. They would sell more of this thing if men bought it. They would sell more of this. It's stupid to think otherwise. It's it's completely idiotic to think they sell products based on some kind of science. Apparently things people Biology has a bad... They do studies with babies and give them female feminine toys and male toys, and the babies are more attracted to the feminine based on their gender, on their sexuality. They do studies on this stuff, and then you can't get in this discussion. They're like, women pay more the pink tax, and you're like, well, no, women want more ingredients in their products because women care about their skin and hair more. I buy Dollar Shampoo. You don't. Uh, you know, a lot. Of, you know, I buy you know cheap razors. I buy well, cheap I mean, stuff. A lot of women. In the first place, why would you even have discourse, uh, RJ? You know you have to agree with what everyone else thinks because otherwise they're going to get triggered. So you should not try to debate people. Why? Why would you do such a thing? People people don't like being told they're wrong even if you're not debating. Like the Teen Titans thing. Yeah. And when I people are saying, told they're wrong, they label you the evil of the planet. Like, it, it needs to stop. Be, it, it needs to be contained with. I wasn't even going to. 
I wasn't even going to make that video. The only reason I made that video was because of the response I got from very smart people. And they didn't even, they would like, someone would argue back to me and they would all like his comment. I hate that when they like someone else arguing with you, but they won't actually leave a comment. They'll just yeah. support the guy shooting on you because they don't have a comeback against you. And I was like, wait, I just provided you complete proof. What more do you need? Young Justice got canceled because toys didn't sell. Teen Titans got canceled because there wasn't enough, there wasn't enough reason to have a sixth season. They wouldn't have made enough money. It, they made more money on reruns, so yeah. they made a decision. That's every cartoon show ever has been decided on merchandise of toys and how much money they can make. The reason The Simpsons is still on is not because everyone watches it. It's because they make a billion dollars in merchandise every year off The Simpsons. So they're never going to lose money on The Simpsons ever. the so it, quality in The Simpsons. And then they, guess what? When they sold those 400 episodes to FXX, they got a billion dollars. Next, they're going to be able to sell another 500 episodes for another billion dollars. Yeah. No one seems to get that. Like, it's all about money. It's all whatever it is. Like, nobody's in this for integrity. That's such a dumb idea people have. They think that any kind, even things that I love, I know there's a basis of it that's in there on money. There's a money aspect to it. It's, sometimes you'll have a Dave Chappelle where he walks away from $50 million dollars. And, and he doesn't have to be a part of it. But for the most part, if you offered most of these YouTubers who talk shit like a sellout, they would take it in five seconds. I guarantee you, they would sell out in five seconds. Why can't sell we just accept that, though? I mean, we need to... I, I don't know. I accept it. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Yeah. I, I want to make one point about I the Teen Titans them. thing. Because it, it... This sort of seems to, like, make that issue a moot, a moot point because I don't even understand why it's a thing. Like... Of all the shows to say are sexist, right? Like, a cartoon with three strong female characters, that's legit half the cast? Like, what? Well, they, even imply, they even imply that Cartoon Network is a sexist network that, manip that like, cancels or keeps shows on based on who watches them. That's so ridiculous. Like, they had the show Tower Prep. That's what Paul Dini was talking about. And it was made for boys. And they released the show, and it wasn't doing well with boys, and that's where they made all the merchandise. It was doing really well with young girls, though, because it kind of had the soap opera tone, and they really liked the guy characters in it. So Cartoon Network canceled it, and people would say that's sexist, but the whole show is built around being for boys, and then that market didn't open up. And they couldn't sell merchandise yeah. or anything to girls for that show. So there was, like, they can't, like, they can't sell a guy's t-shirt or something from a show to a girl. It just doesn't make marketing sense. So they're like, well, this yeah. isn't financially beneficial. So let's say something like Adventure Time. Girls watch it, little kids watch it, guys watch it, old people, and they sell merchandise to everyone. So they're going to keep Adventure Time on if the guys wanted to end it, which is what happened. But with other shows, you're always going to like, man, why'd they cancel that show I loved? I'm like, it wasn't making money. That's what it is 99% of the time. Like, yeah. Why didn't they make that movie? If it wasn't going to make money, that's why. That's why they didn't make that movie. Or that's why, that's, they, that's why they didn't movie. kill off. Yeah, I mean, why don't people get upset yeah. about money being the... If you want to get upset about something, get upset about money being the driving force for everything. Because even the YouTube thing, so like, it, that, it comes back it, to that at the end of the day as well. Because in this opinion war, at the end of the day, what gets affected are independent creators of content that cannot make money. And I want to give you an example of one of my videos that is still under review because I just think it's really funny and I haven't talked about it yet but um, for those of you who are regular watchers of my channel um, you, you'll know that a few months ago, a few weeks ago, several weeks ago there was a video in which I told an anecdote, right? So in my comm law class here at Clarion we learned that in the 90s the Clarion Call published an anti-Semitic ad because they got paid like something ridiculous like a thousand plus dollars to run it right so my vlog like the first 10 minutes or so of it was just talking about how like how crazy that was like just in general like that that had actually happened 25 years ago that some random dude out there paid the clarion call staff that was obviously not here at the school any longer um to do that and it actually happened and there were like repercussions right so just because I told a story, and I think maybe the tags um, had, like, I don't know, like, because it was, like, it's some, oh, the ad specifically said the Holocaust never happened, right? So one of the tags mm -hmm. um, was Holocaust, which, even if I took that out there, I think it would still be a problem because there was so such a heavy prominence of the story of this controversial nature in the video, 
And um, yeah, because of course I'm not supporting any of that terrible stuff, but because I even talked about it, um, I'm a bad person. I don't deserve money. <laughs> this is what YouTube says. Well, th that's pretty ridiculous. Because why is talking yeah. about the Holocaust on any level offensive? Like that's like that's a historical thing. Like yeah, it's like no, oh, yeah, this thing that actually talk happened. About anything, like you said, like with yeah. the Islam thing, like you can't talk about words in any perspective or angle without being too controversial, possibly. Well, I, I, money i don't know i'm having fear i title my videos a lot safer now because i used to put in really funny titles but i'm like i'm not calling this that anymore mm -hmm. um you know because I, I used to have fun titles like it's alt right to punch a nazi um <laughs> or samantha b did not see this coming you know stuff like that i think it's really funny yeah i like puns <laughs> and um not anymore uh, i like to punish people you know yeah well that's that's the issue like you want to put something really funny like you want to put like you want to put like you know uh, you know, faggots react to Trump, you know, but you can't. You know, you want to put something yeah. really offensive in a video that's supposed to be ridiculous. Like, you want to put, uh, well, like, I mean, tuck, if you, you know, if you want to write put something in for entertainment value, you obviously mean every word of it, right? So. Yeah, that's the thing. It sucks. Like, I've never said faggot to a gay guy, I don't think, ever in my life. I mean, I, I probably said it jokingly to a gay guy or hanging out with him, but I can't think of my life ever went up to a guy that's you fucking faggot. I mean, I'd laugh my ass off if I heard a guy say that. Like, if a guy seriously <laughs> called me a faggot, like, mad. I'd laugh so hard. I'd be like, oh, dude, that's so funny. Because I've never heard it said to me in a serious way. Yeah. It's always been like, you know, like, hey, fag. But and, if you um, say it in any way, it's funny you obviously it's... meant it. So, YouTube strikes. It's just a funny word. That's what I say to people. It's like, I'm sorry, fag's just one of the funniest words on the planet. It's the way it sounds. It's like how, how we like the word cunt, and now cuck's becoming popular. It's cuck's, cuck's like our cunt. Yeah. It's like America's cuck. Uh, like, because cuck sounds, you call a guy a cuck, it's like amazing. Like, you're a cuck, dude. And it's like, that means you like to watch men have sex with you. <laughs> I mean, it's the biggest insult in the world. <laughs> it's like, you want men to come over and have sex with your wife while you watch because you're that. I mean, like, there's yeah. not a worse insult I could think of. So to call a guy a cuck, and people are so triggered by that word. And even me, if someone calls me one, I'm like, ah, oh, God, you got me. Um, well, I mean, and, I think uh, it really I, comes yeah, down I would... to the theme of people giving so many words or things, like, too much weight. I mean, whether you're getting offended by something even being discussed in the first place or not allowing monetization or whatever. Yeah, it just comes down to why do we put so much weight on all these things? Like, why can't we just freely, more freely talk? Like, isn't that what the United States is about? Well, that's like my thing with cyberbullying. I love the premise of cyberbullying because there's that Tyler, the creator tweet that's really famous where he's like, he's like, cyberbullying? He's like, what the hell, nigga? He's like, just close your eyes. <laughs> and that's like, that's what I always think. It's like, you don't have to look at a mean message on the internet. You can legitimately, like, if I don't like people, they're asking me, I block them. And I don't see their stuff anymore. Yeah. And then I don't go to that place. But for some reason, people talk about, like, they're on the internet and, like, they're getting stalked or harassed. And I'm like, well, that doesn't, I, I hate to tell you, that happens to everyone. They, they try to make it, like, a specific to women, which I'm sure, you know, in a lot of cases, it's worse. But, like, yeah. I mean, God, I get I get attacked every day on every website, pretty much, um, and I don't, you know, I don't get, I don't get off. I'm like, I gotta call the cops. Oh my god, um, yeah. I just, I just, I, you know, sometimes I go back and write a fucking, you know, book reply yeah. like, you know, like, oh, I'm gonna show him. And then when you send it, you're like really excited because you think that asshole's gonna read every single word. Like you're like, oh man, mama. He's going to love it. And you try to, like, use some bigger words in there. You throw it in. You're like, I'm going to throw this in there so he notices that. See how smart I am? Mm. All right. That's a $200 word for you. You might have to Google that one. I did. And then, you know, you, you get it out there, and then he doesn't reply. And you're like, oh! Yeah. You know, you want, you, want to, you want to know you got it. You know, you're like, did he even look at it? Yeah. You know, it's like sending You'll a text to a girl. Yeah, you're just waiting all day like, God, I can't text again. I can't do a second message. <laughs> You know, I can't look desperate. <laughs> no, no, I have to wait. You know, and then you wait two days and you never respond. You're like, damn it. And even though, you, yeah, and then you feel like an idiot because you spent so much time. Yeah. Um, and that's that's basically cyberbullying in a nutshell. Like you, your problem with it is you put time into it. You're mad that someone said something to you on the internet and you won't let it go. Because yeah. you can always walk away most of the time. And I can yeah. say that because I don't walk away. I know, but <laughs> I just jump into it. Yeah. It's like a pool of trolls, and I'm just like in there like Michael Phelps. I thrive. <laughs> yeah. No, I have like 12 gold medals in trolling. I love it. Yeah. Um, I agree. And it's like uh, 
and when people say, oh, I wish things were less PC or this and that, um, then people confuse you for delegitimizing the way they feel or their position. And it's like, no, I just want people to like, I think most people generally just want to be treated with respect and to not freak out, please, over little things. But maybe some people do want to freak out. I mean, I, over little things. Then maybe that's the actual problem here. But well, I think it's boredom. There's a theory that uh, yeah. there's a theory, and I, I I hate to give it some credence, but I kind of get where it comes from. The whole idea is that um, if this country, a country like this, a republic, a big country like this, you know, if we don't go so long without a great war, we get so bored that we start infighting with each other. And it's just that history because we really, our generation, we haven't really had our great war. You know, we haven't had yeah. a World War II. And that was the identity of America. There's really not an identity. We don't have the Holy Land. I mean, you know? that does make a lot of sense. And the idea with the Holy Land is, you know, you fight for the Holy Land. That is you. That is, you know, we are Israel. Um, America doesn't quite have that this generation. This generation, I think, has a disconnect from the and idea the that generation, we... It probably doesn't help that we're more diverse. And there, yeah. there are more things to infight about, whether it's... Yeah. Whether it's obvious or it's ideology or whatever. Well, that's what I think happened. I think without a war, you don't have a bad guy. So you have to make yeah. up bad guys in America because there's a hero complex within people naturally in civilized countries. It's hard to have a hero complex when you're treated like shit all day. But when yeah. you live in a country like this where you talk about privilege, yet you have a cell phone, the internet and everything, you're being oblivious to the fact – or when like – I always love it when somebody talks shit about capitalism and they own an iPhone and a computer and – yeah. It's like you benefit in every single way from it, though. You love it. You don't realize you love it. You're not a hippie out living in the woods. You're Everything you do is technology. If yeah. technology didn't exist, nobody would give a shit about what you'd have to say. You'd have to actually go out and campaign and call people. Or physically. Yeah, you'd have to go do physical work. Like if yeah. I wanted to go make a movie 20 years ago, I would have had to get a film camera, film stock. All sorts of stuff. Now I can, you know, we have DSLRs and stuff, and it's way easier. Yeah. It's the same thing with that. It's like kids today, they have, I've noticed it with young people, because I'm a little older, you know, I'm nearing 30, so I, I have a little bit of that, like, I can see how 20, 21 year olds are kind of seeing the world a little bit, because, yeah. you know, I was 20, 21, you know, like, uh, tw you know, 2011 and stuff. I was, and, um, yeah. well, I mean, you, you, I, I am 20, so. Yeah. You think, you start to get that at age, and you start to notice your aging, and a lot of these people, they start to think they have to stand for something and fight something. They really get this belief that they, life has to meet something. And they don't realize that most people in their 20s don't accomplish shit. It's actually very rare in your mid-20s, early 20s to really be someone. Some people do, don't get me wrong. But, yeah, but that, most that people would depress me mega if I didn't accomplish anything in the next 10 years. But well, 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 well something, something major. Like they yeah. want to be – they want to win an Oscar. They oh. want to win a. They want to be. They want some arbitrary congratulatory award because they feel insecure. Well, so and, they need to be a crusader. So when you're not insecure, like let's say me and you aren't. I mean, we're insecure, but I think we're not insecure yeah. totally with how we make content, right? Yeah. Because there's there's something to be said about confidence it takes to make art to make even a video like this for us to do this podcast. It takes a certain kind of confidence to even come on here and talk with. I mean, I, even I before we did this, I get nervous every time I make a video. Yeah. Like, I get this feeling in my stomach where I'm like, oh, my God. It's like the first day I'm on the set of a movie or something. Like, I always I always tell people, I puke the first day. Like, I'm there with the cameras. We're setting it up. And I get so overwhelmed thinking about we're going to do this for, like, two months. I throw up in, like, a trash can because I can't handle yeah, it. Yeah, this is going to be like, a thing. Yeah. I'm going to have a panic attack, you know. I'm like, oh, my God. And, that you know, I, I'm a little bit of a, a hypochondriac, so that doesn't help. But it's... It's the thing, though, where, like, people want to think they stand for something. They believe – this is why Harry Potter is too celebrated by the left in this generation. They think Harry Potter is their story. They want to be Harry Potter. That was the story we grew up on. They want to fight Voldemort, Donald Trump's Voldemort. That's why you always see these really lazy comparisons because they don't have a historical – they don't know what Nazis are. They use. Yeah. I mean, if we're going to talk killers, let's bring up Stalin. His numbers were way better than Hitler. You're using yeah. lowballing numbers there. You know, they don't even yeah. know many. Gen they only know Hitler because that's the famous person they can reference, exactly. and that's all it is. So they think, oh well, Harry fought the evil. All my understanding of politics and and the nuance <laughs> of it comes from the 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 debates in the Harry Potter films. Yeah. And I legitimately mean that. I don't think people are reading. Uh, Dostoevsky. I don't think people are reading Socrates. I don't think people are reading Plato. I don't think they're reading uh, Hemingway as much. I think they are reading Harry Potter, right? which is fine, but 
but they they buy into the mythical like Jordan Peterson talks about this stuff wonderfully is that there's this idea of the mythical good versus evil thing that was defined throughout history morally like people broke down all the basic story structures and said this is good and bad and J.K. Rowling tapped into that she did the basic Christ story and that's why it was so successful because the Christ story is universal yeah. uh, even Louis C.K. said the year 2017 everywhere in the world bases their year off Jesus Christ's birth like every every religion in the world we still the year is based off that Christianity won Mm-hmm. Basically, because it's like this isn't the yeah. year 20, 2017. This yeah, is right. like this year, year. This is like year billion. You know, yeah. something, you know. Yeah. Um, and that's that's the thing people don't get. They want to change history. They want to be the civil rights movement. They want to be because uh, they always want to say it. they want to say, "Oh, the women's march was our Selma," even though that not even close to the same effect. It's not even close. They want to, and they don't have someone who represents them. So they cling on to people that push rhetoric, like I think of Bernie Sanders or, or Donald Trump, because it gives them this feeling of purpose that this guy's fighting something. Yeah. But in reality, the America, we don't stand for anything, and that's going to be the biggest problem with this generation going in the future is the identity crisis of you don't have a bad guy. And yeah. uh, I think that's why people want Russia to be the bad guy, because you want a bad guy. You want to fight against somebody, and that, and unfortunately that might be human nature. I mean – that might be the way humans. Um, it might be, but I, maybe I'm naive in wishing that we could sort of evolve from that and sort of do a little self-reflection on this. Because I mean, you and I obviously realize that that's the thing. That's that that's a thing. Because politics, it it it's not always we're labeling each other good and evil, like ourselves good and them evil. But a lot of people do that. I see it every day. You see it every day. We all probably see it every day if we're on social media. Probably less so in real life because that actually has real physical intimate consequences. And- yeah, it's funny how people don't want to like yell at you as much or call you a Nazi when they're oh, in exactly. your face. Yeah, it's really interesting how they don't have a – because you know, I don't actually obey that rule. I pretty much speak in public as I do on the internet at yeah. the most part. Which is uh, probably a healthy thing to do. <laughs> Well, it keeps you it keeps you transparent. I've learned that yeah. if you start playing a role long enough, you start catching yourself doing it too much. So if you lie all the yeah. time, uh, you're going to end up lying more than you want to. I don't yeah, like exactly. lying, so I try to avoid it. Unfortunately, that means sometimes you sound like an asshole. Yeah. Because um, you tell someone if you don't like something they said, and that hurts people's feelings. Um, oh. It doesn't hurt my feelings if someone tells me if they like what I don't say. But uh, I think there's a way to do it without being mean. Um, but for some people, it's just mean to even imply that what they said is wrong. On yeah, it's level. totally true. I mean, and we see that everywhere. And it's like, why can't we just like sit back and realize, hey, maybe there isn't this super big evil thing, like in all the stories we love, because that's that is what gives us purpose. That is the narrative quest, like you said, Harry Potter. Like that, that's what defines fiction and all that stuff defines our actual current present a real world and like you said big wars that can do the same thing in different times so we just need to step back and be like hey it's no big evil but we can still debate we can still have discourse we can become this high-minded athens of intellectuals why can't we do that instead i mean that's asking a lot i know but i i i am just baffled that we are not at a point right now where everyone just isn't having conversations i thought this is exactly where we were going like 10 years ago, and man, was I wrong. I was way off. Like, if you'd asked me in 08, I would have said complete opposite shit of what I say now completely. I'd have been a totally different person. If you're not willing to change to the world that's changing around you, you are just going to live in an ignorance uh, and bubble. If you're not willing to go, okay, that guy used to like it's full of shit now because he did something I don't stand for. And nobody wants to do that. Like me, I supported Barack Obama. I was there with everyone in 08. I lived in Texas, for Christ's sakes. Don't oh, but you're forget. a Nazi. Why would you be in a law support? Yeah, and I was there. I don't like him now. That's because he did not do the things that I voted for him for. That's all it was. But you, you can't have those discussions. We can't talk about policy. We can't talk about issues with politicians. We can't talk about stuff like that. It always has to be, well, Obama's black, so let's talk about that. You know? Yeah, like why have we – I don't I don't it's like, fully why get is, it. Like why have we devolved? Because that's what makes money in the end. Like that's what is sensationalistic and will – that, that's what will be on TV or on the internet, and I, I guess that's why we've devolved, because in, like, a biological sense, in, like, a social sense, it doesn't make sense that we've devolved our ways of thinking this way. So there, there's something man-made, human-made, that has, like, made the situation a lot worse. 
Well, I think I think it's a couple things, and I hate to say it because it's not like I'm against. I'm not against secularism at all. I believe in it totally. Um, but there's something to be said how Europe went almost too secular. And there is this fighting between European cultures. Like, everyone in Europe is scared to be a nationalist place because they're scared of the Nazi thing. And Europe's really had a hard time with identity post-World War II. It's been a really tough thing. And I think a lot of Europe feels like they're under the shadow of America, and I understand that. It's kind of like... Yeah, and it's like, that's not that's hardly something we can even relate to because we've... Yeah, we don't know. Yeah. And I'm not, I'm not talking shit. I think European culture is amazing. I think why America's great is because we took all the best parts of European culture and just threw out all the bad stuff. We said, okay, this stuff yeah. sucks. This is how you run your, your capital. You know, you guys don't you don't know how to run your money. You don't know how to run religion and all that. The Catholic Church has way too much goddamn power. We need to get rid of that, you know. And yeah. I love cyclism, but there's something to be said when you start to lose the the least because the thing that America stood for, even if you didn't believe in it, was the the stu- you know one nation under God. Even though that was added later, but people are so against that stuff now, like the idea of Judaic Christian traditions or it, it, there's, there's just something about it, like, it's it's considered so negative, even though there's some really positive stuff from Jesus. There's still some good things to take from that. Most people who are Christian don't really read the books or radicalize. Most of them don't even care. They just pretend yeah. they're Christian. And that's – but they still like to believe that they're they're doing something right. And I, I don't know. I feel like a lot of the youth today – and I kind of fell into this for a few years. So I was just completely like, hey, I'm – I'm a nihilist, I don't believe anything, you know, objective morality, you know, it was always like, you know, the, the world's a bad place, there's nothing you can do about it, America shit, the government shit, the military shit, and then you realize when you get older, you're like, that's so stupid to say, like, the military shit, it's like, without the military, America would be America, you moron, it's like, why do we spend so much money on it, so we can be in charge of the world, that's why, that's the only reason we are, and it helps the whole world economy to have military spending, but they think about it from a moral standpoint, like, we shouldn't kill people, I go, I agree too, but you're you're playing a card that doesn't exist. When did we ever not kill people? Yeah. There wasn't that time in America where we didn't kill people. Um, and there's not a time in any country that I know of that's been this big that didn't kill people. Um, yeah. And, you know, we got rid of slavery. We did give women rights. We did, and we still have a long way to go, but to ignore progress over like 200-something years and act like America's still stuck in the 40s or the 1800s is uh, obtuse. Uh, it shows the lack of reading, I think. Yeah. That you did not read uh, everything that happened post-World War II. Or it, um, I, I even think it's like, it's not even that. I think people do, like, deep down know that there's been progress made. But it's like, they want to, they think the best way to act is to ignore progress we've made. Because so much focus needs to be on progress we have yet to make. But I think that's destructive. I think that's self-destructive because I think that means... If you ignore progress that has been made, um, or or just at least try to acknowledge it, and, and not blow things out of proportion, like oh this is what this is now because we suck so much, like you're not gonna make any more progress. Like how did how did I end up being more racist now than I was when I voted for Obama in 08? I don't know how this happened. Like I voted in a black man in 2008, and the country apparently is more racist now than it was back then. Because I remember 08. It was one of the most unifying years ever. Like, yeah. Obama, Obama winning, there was no sense of... It was almost kind of like... It was the first time I ever felt like this post-racial feeling in America. I never really felt it my whole life. It was kind of like this... Well, nobody really seems to be that upset about... They claim people were, but it goes through this. Obama had record numbers of voters. He had record numbers of people showing up. It's like, the whole country liked Barack Obama. Yeah. Um, and he got voted in twice. So I hate this idea that the country is now racist, even though we supported this guy... And race never seemed to be a factor, at least for the people who were voting for him. And then when two white people are running against each other and one white person beats the other white person, somehow there's a race issue now in this country, even though you really didn't have another option. You could only vote for two white people. Yeah, you had two terrible it, options. Yeah, it wasn't like I could go vote for some black guy. There wasn't one, you know? And it was a... Uh, I mean, I think if Obama could have ran a third term, he would have beat Donald Trump. Um, it just... That wasn't yeah. going to happen. It wasn't going to happen, and I'm sorry that the Democratic Party spent the last eight years um, kind of dismantling themselves to the point where they couldn't win in a general election. They spent – from as they were so hyped on Obama, they forgot that you have to set up the next campaign after the current president. You can't just like ride the wave of Barack Obama into yeah, the next – or you can't just reuse the runner-up from the last one. Well, like Al Gore tried that with Bill Clinton. You know, That was all like, oh, well, I was this you know, vice president. It's like – yeah, that's yeah, not going to be enough. enough. You have to, like, 
You know, and th not that that wasn't a close election. People always say, like, how did this happen? I go, the same thing happened after Bill Clinton. Al Gore lost after eight years of Bill Clinton. Um, the only time it's been, like, consistent that I know of recently has been the 80s where it was, like, Reagan, Reagan, Bush. Yeah. And then Clinton. But it seems to always go back and forth is that the country goes too radical left or they go too radical right wing with, like, the Tea Party. Then people vote one way to fight that. And then it goes the other way again. Now we see the left is acting crazy. And then... It'll yeah. probably, four years from now, we'll be talking about, I mean, I remember four years ago, it was always like, God, conservative Christians suck. Now I'm like, God, liberal Islam defenders suck. It's like, wait a minute. Well, it, liberal yeah, Islam defenders? On conflict, isn't it, right? I mean. I think so. And you I mentioned think... 2008 being a unifying year. You want to know why? I think why? Because we didn't have, we didn't need conflict to unify us. We had the freaking Great Recession and all this other junk that was going on at the time. We had things to to uh, inspire us to do better and to motivate us to, to actually unify. Well, you know things are getting better when we're unhappy like this, because in no way we were miserable after eight <laughs> yeah. years, of, and economically, and we were all so happy that, and now we, pretty much things are, you know, generally I do think the economy is doing better. Generally I do think things are looking better. Um, not, in, you know, not for specific things, but I do think, I'm yeah. not worried America's not going to be here in 20 years or something. You know, I don't think anyone in the world is showing any kind of threat to take over the world power. Um, yeah. I, I think people who think that aren't aware of how that America actually has satellites that watch everything in the world at all times. There's drones everywhere. I mean, there's. Uh, I mean, I, I'm basically under the theory that we could pretty much blow up any country in the world if we wanted to at any given time. We just choose not to for political reasons. And I think any kind of war conflict we do start has some political meaning behind it half the time. I don't think – I'm not with everyone that it's like America's just like gun-ho. we got to defend the land. I'm like there's probably some beneficial uh, aspect yeah. to this happening because why else would they be doing it? Um, why would they bomb somebody if it didn't have some kind of benefit to them on some level? Because why, why would you do it? Yeah. Uh, that's why – well, that's the thing people don't get is that we've we've made – I love capitalism, but corporate America has unfortunately fallen into – politics it's fallen into the media horribly uh and it's falling into i mean it's falling into everything now it's become now that uh you know advertisers who don't agree with the political ideology of people on youtube don't want to put their ads in their videos which you have the right to do but google is not a private company i think here's the thing there's a point when a company becomes so big and they monopoly this happened with at&t some people don't know at&t had every phone in the country so they had to yeah. make at t not do that anymore they controlled every phone the idea that Google gets the private company argument is bullshit, quite frankly, because they are the internet. They yeah. are YouTube and Google. They own every other major platform. And then there's Facebook and Twitter, and that's about it. So the fact that Facebook censors, even worse than Google, pisses me off because it's a public service. Everyone uses it. If you want to get your videos watched on the internet, you have to go on YouTube. If you want people to find your stuff, you have to be on Google. So it's a public service for a billion people. You can't decide what you are allowed to advertise or show on that channel. And I think Google's way past that point. I don't even think, I don't even think it holds up. Like it just pisses me off when someone's like, "They're a private company." I go, "No, they're not." I go, "A private company is like some guy owns a business and he gets to decide what he does with it. It's not that you own a thing that everybody in the world uses for one thing." Exactly. That's I, ridiculous. It's my prediction that legally that will probably. I don't see how it can happen. It's going to happen because that happened with AT&T. Um, AT&T literally had every pay phone, every phone in the country, I mean the world. And you know now they don't at all. And that's what's going to happen with Google because I, I, as far as I can tell, there's really only four or five major websites that pretty much control the internet anymore. If that, there might only be three. And it used to be – like if back in the day, if you wanted to watch your content, I would have had to go like this eventskyfiles.com. And I would have went to your stuff, yeah. and you would have went to, you know, renaissancemen.com. Now we both go on YouTube, because that's where the shit is. Yeah. That's where the views are. That's where the ads are, the communication are. If they're going to do that, that's fine. If you're going to make the internet smaller and local, I don't mind that, but you can't censor them because I literally have nowhere else to go. Like, there's literally not another YouTube. There's not another yeah. Facebook. Well, I mean, just, and that's where that lack of freedom comes if these companies do want to restrict us unnecessarily. It's really what it boils down to. And they want to label people that are – they want to dehumanize. You know, I, I, there's a big thing with that with Marxism and stuff is dehumanization. When they call you a Nazi, you know, they tell you you're not a human. You're this label when you're yeah. all right, you know, when, when you believe in that. You know, which, you know, I, I, I'm even, you know, a victim of, of calling people SJWs and, you know, I do it for funny, you know. it's But they, they believe that – 
yeah, they, they label you as that thing, and then you're never not going to be that thing. And then whatever they think of that thing, that's what you are. And that's basically not human interaction. That's no, not how you get to know anyone. Not at all. you got to sit down and talk with somebody, I, I think, for at least an hour to actually know them pretty well. Like, how you guys talk with each other. It's like going on a date, you know? It's not awesome the first five, ten minutes. It takes a while to get a, you know, to feel it out, and then you know if it's going good or bad. Yeah. Um, that's, that's how people should interact, but they... Uh, they want it's like labeling a girl a slut before you go on a date with her, so you can't see her as anything else but a slut, right? So you don't spend any time with her getting to know her as a person. You just think about having sex with her. That's how it is with this. Like, once they see you as a racist, you're not a guy who's talking about race. You're just a racist. And you know, I'm just a guy talking about race. You'd have to actually prove I'm a racist. That's my thing. Like, you can prove I'm a racist, and I'll take your criticism. But you yeah, but no one cares about proving these things because labels are easier and they come first and that's all people really need and that's how YouTube currently operates. So, I mean, we, we both wish that our platform soon will I don't know, just realize this and I don't know. It, it's, it's unethical to, to do this because you have to recognize that words have weight and merit. You can't just like throw them around because that's literally how we control and shape our environment. In the most basis level, I mean, there's money, there's government, whatever, but communication, I mean, that's where it all comes from. And that's why the media, YouTube, it's like, I'll take a step back for God's sake. Well, you're an ethical point. I think that's something we need to talk about. Like, if you want to demonetize someone like Joey Salads, go ahead. He deserves not one penny off those videos. Oh, no. You want to demonetize Foos YouTube, go ahead. That is unethical. They should not make money or put ads in that exactly. stuff because but what they're doing. But it's also unethical on the other side of the coin to treat people who aren't doing unethical things the same yeah, way. That's the issue. W without like, any judge or jury or anything, because it's the internet, it's not a courtroom, and that's not how it operates, because we're at the mercy of our Lord and Savior, YouTube slash Google. Well, that's the problem with Google, is that I just want to know that Google cares about the content creators, but it doesn't seem like they... What's the one thing YouTube never advertises is the idiosyncratic nature of its content creators. Netflix. When you hear Netflix advertisements, like, Daredevil, come watch Stranger Things. HBO, come watch Game of Thrones. It's not TV. It's HBO. CBS, come get your Big Bang Theory and sitcoms with your laugh tracks, you know? What do you get on YouTube? Uh, come to YouTube. We're not going to show you the stuff on our channel that is exclusive. You know, the creepy pastas, the horror videos, the the gun videos, the, the the videos where people show you how they make stuff, the bloggers, the the, the anti SJW content, even the, some of the stuff that literally is nowhere else in the world. Yeah. And um, YouTube will not they'll not go hey because a lot of people don't even know it exists. They don't yeah, know that like you could go to YouTube and find something that you completely love that you didn't know existed, like this weird niche video thing, exactly. which I find all the time, some weird thing that I, you know, that's what I believe the anti-SJW thing. I hated SJWs. I didn't know what they were. I just started to notice people saying all these things, like, oh, man, I hate these people. And then I found people on the internet bitching about those people. So I, yeah. I liked it. And then that just blew up. But that's what happens. You can find a place where... People set up an atmosphere of the kind of stuff you want to listen to or be around an environment to comfort yourself in the way you want to. Like, I love going to bed at night listening to some YouTube videos. I love, uh, you know, like there's, there's a, I, I'm a, I like to play chess. I'm a pretty avid chess player, and I love Bobby Fischer. There's a whole channel on YouTube, and all they do is go through old Bobby Fischer chess games and break them down for you piece by piece. Yeah. And they break them down and explain it to you. That's so great for me. That's so much easier than me having to read a book or read how he did it. It's great to see them go through piece by piece. And I watch those videos. I mean, I watch like three or four a night. I watch like these long chess matches, Bobby Fischer, because I'm trying to learn how he did his line work and stuff. And uh, that's really only on YouTube, kind of, that I could yeah. just, you know, enter that in and watch it all night and go on a playlist. And uh, Exactly. And that's that's beautiful. Like, that's it what's is. beautiful, and they don't advertise that. They don't give a shit about that. They want to put Jimmy Fallon, James Corden with their celebrities on their singing, the shallow, lazy content that gets a hundred million. Oh, look, Adele singing with James Corden. It went viral. Yeah, put me and you in a car with Adele. It's going to go fucking viral, too. Yeah. Um, and it'd be a lot funnier if the two of us were in the car with Adele than James Corden. I would agree uh, with that. <laughs> yeah, I ranked him. I said that he's Jack Black 3.0. I was like, there's Jack Black and Josh Gad, and then James Corden gets the role third if the, those two turn it down. Yeah. Um, that, that's Probably. basically how it is. And that's what they want. They want something that's going to get instant hits that people enjoy shallowly and take the ads. 
but they don't want to invest in the content like, let's say, our content where people spend hours watching it. Like, yeah. people watch my stuff, listen to two-hour podcasts and watch 30-minute videos, and, and they, they, they're, I mean, their life, they spend a lot of time around it. They don't just watch that clip from The Tonight Show, laugh at it, because, you know, it's like, oh, Jimmy Fallon's playing games with the kids from Stranger Things. And you're really watching it because the kids from Stranger Things are there. You wouldn't watch it because Jimmy Fallon. You yeah. never click on it. You would just you click on it because it's got someone in it, and then you watch it, and then and I think that's the disconnect. They don't get the internet. They think the internet wants that, and the internet culture is so anti TV and so anti the way TV works. We don't like. I mean, Big Bang Theory is a really popular show, except on the internet. Anywhere else in the world, Big Bang Theory, you ask anyone, like, hey, what's your favorite show? Big Bang Theory, huge hit, everyone loves it. You go on the internet, you will not find anyone on YouTube who supports that fucking show. They'll go, that is the worst show. You know, they hate Sheldon Cooper. You know, and that's that's the internet. That show's not a hit uh, with the people who hang out on YouTube. That show's a hit with people who watch CBS. And uh, they, I think that's the thing with the media. They think that we want to watch Rachel Maddow and Chris Matthews and then pretend they're having a serious conversation. It's like, no, I don't. I don't want to see you all sit around these little bobbing heads talking. They're just talking and saying words, and they don't really mean anything. It's like the angel and devil fighting on your shoulders, and they're both assholes, and you just yeah. flip them both off. You want to you want to listen to somebody who's interesting that's also telling you the information. You don't want to listen to interesting information from a really boring source, which when was the last time you watched a news report on CNN that wasn't freaking boring? It's like going to church. It's like, can we add a little can – can this be like a black church? Can we add some song and dance to it or something, a little rhythm? percussion uh, it just makes you wonder what would happen if they they switched out all of the trending videos from you know actual highlights of what youtube was at its core like what if they got rid of the late night talk show stuff or the news videos or the dumb viral challenges and they actually focused on hey here's this newest let's play or movie review or weird yeah. ass video that you wouldn't even know about i mean like, because people would still watch it because we already have the people here. They're already here at YouTube. Like, and, and I guarantee you, you pay them a lot less than you have to pay Jimmy Fallon. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, for I instance, know, right? Angry Video Game Nerd, James Rolfe. I brought this point up before. He was huge. He was the ninth most subscribed channel at one point on this platform. He was one of the yeah. first guys to get a million subs. Every one of his videos made a million subs. YouTube fucked that guy over so much. He eventually got hired by MTV to work at Game Trailers and Spike. And... Here's what I always said. If, why can YouTube just go up to that guy and say, hey, we're going to hire you, Google, like, you work for this company now, we're going to make, every time you make an angry, because they consistently got every angry video game from a million hits. He had no endorsement. He did it all in his base, like, in his room in his house. It's like Ethan. He sits in a room with his, his girlfriend, and they talk to a camera. Imagine yeah. if a company said, hey, we're going to give you a set. Like, he built his own, but imagine they said, we're going to give you that stuff. If they imagine how many more views they would get if they got support from the like, cause if you're getting yeah. five million hits without the support of a mainstream backer, then I have to assume you'd get twenty million hits. Yeah, if you just get the support of the mainstream backer. So these YouTubers that like PewDiePie or these people get a few minutes, they're probably people who could get twenty, thirty million viewers, which is huge for like television ratings. Yeah. And they would be cheaper, and you would end up making more profits. And I'm sorry, people do not watch ads on TV. Most people have TiVo. Exactly. I can't remember the last time I watched a fucking commercial on TV. The Super but pe- Bowl. People will watch 10-second ads. Yeah, people watch 10-second ads on a YouTube video, though. It doesn't really bother me. I mean, I have ad block on, but if I see an ad come up, sometimes I don't care. Yeah. Um, and I believe in it. I believe in the ad system. Like, hey, put your stuff on my videos. If people watch it, it does well, and you give me money. Mm-hmm. Um, when you start to make it an ethical argument, and then that's what the media is doing, they're making everything with YouTube an ethical argument, and it's like, well, what? Why are you so much better than me? What the what the hell did you do to be the moral arbiter of this shit? Like, when did you decide that like I'm bad, I don't deserve this? And you exactly. Spent, you spent fifty grand on a journalism degree. You probably make less than a hundred k a year at this job. You get shit on by your boss. You're very mad, and some guy on YouTube has fifty four million subscribers and has more influence than you, and he didn't go to college for. So you're mad at him. You know that's that's what I mean. I've never seen more bitterness from writers and journalists than I have this last year or two. It, it, it's one thing I always say about writers is when you read a guy's article and he tries to make jokes and they comment on comedy and they're really unfunny. You know it's somebody who like 
was never funny and they don't like actual funny people. So this, you'll see it a lot of times in like a New York Times. They're like, oh, this guy's not funny. Yeah. It's never criticizing a comedian most of the time. It's always somebody who's not funny, isn't quick on their feet. And they try, it's like something I hate in film reviews where they always write terrible puns about the movie. Like, oh, don't go see this film. And then they relate it to the title. Like if it comes out this year, they'll be like, it is, it shit. You know, and they, they try to write a little clever word or something, and uh-huh. and it's so unfunny. It's like a dad joke, and you're like, oh, my God, just stick to writing, dude. You know, yeah. and I feel like that's what all these people are. They're journalists. They didn't become Walter Cronkite. They didn't become the main person. And then some guy on YouTube that's some, like, 25-year-old kid is famous, and, you know, he, he has influence, and you don't. He, get, he makes more money than you. He makes, like, you know, like 200 grand a year, depending on what his channel is. And yeah. you're sitting there like... You know, working your ass off, and you spend all this money and stuff, and I, I don't know what to tell people. I get that upsetting you, but that's welcome to the world. Welcome to uh, they underrated YouTube. They thought it was a small, stupid platform. I've heard this first. I remember watching Mark Cuban yeah. in an interview six, seven years ago, where he said YouTube was a fad and it wasn't going to exist in a few years. And I was like, you're such an idiot. Like, because the people who don't see it just never want to say it. It's like, oh well, TV's not going to replace radio. Oh, DVDs aren't going to replace VHS. Yeah. Oh, this Netflix thing isn't going to catch on. Why would people want to watch movies at home on their TV? It's like, yeah, I know. Who would want to do that? It's crazy. Why would I want to stream? And uh, that's always YouTube. It's like, what do you mean? People want to watch uncensored videos all the time? That's like Howard Stern, where they could say whatever they want? That's ridiculous. That's such a novel concept, yeah. Well, I think we've gone back to radio. What we're doing right now is radio. I know, right? And well, like we've reached in the internet this pinnacle of expression where we can really hear, see, read, or talk about, perform, or write anything, anything. So it's it's not even a, it's not even like a question of what what medium is it. It's just uh, it's just the freedom of content. Like I don't know why that's not more more encouraged by like the higher ups. Like why. Instead of getting YouTube heroes to scare the shit out of us, why don't our most popular YouTubers get, like you said, the sets or the backing or the actual communication with the whole platform? It would cost nothing. It would cost nothing in comparison to what the Tonight Show spends. If people would have a positive opinion about YouTube, creators would make more content. People would not complain. They'd watch more. Like... I don't understand. Well, once you work for someone, once it's a job, then you take it seriously. It's different. Mm-hmm. Like, once you get hired by somebody and you have a contract and a job, you it's a job. Most YouTubers, they don't have a boss. And I think not having a boss is a good and bad thing. Yeah. Because if you're really good at not having a boss, then I think it's a good thing. Some people need a boss. And this this is like how George Lucas needs somebody to tell him no when he's making a movie. You know, he needs to have that. Sometimes you need somebody to come up and tell you what you're doing is bullshit. And you need to fix it, and they can give you a good idea. A good producer, like let's say in a movie, is the guy that fixes the issue that the director and the writer doesn't see because he has an outside perspective. Yeah. He's not so in it, you know. And you can't do that. You can't like. And my thing with YouTube, if they just said, "Hey, we're gonna we're gonna keep the system the same. We're gonna give you guys money. We're gonna but we're gonna give the big YouTuber special benefits and make us real money. We're gonna give them money stuff. That's fair." I don't yeah. make the money that Ethan makes or I dubs or PewDiePie. I don't deserve to make any money off these guys, but don't fuck them over when they're literally like a success story. Well, it's because, I mean, they represent us. The bigger content creators represent us. Like, you do that kind of video. You do that commentary thing. H3H3 H3 and these other channels, they sort of represent you. So what happens to them Logically, that's going to happen to me. So, how how should I make decisions based on? Well, the goal's to be them too. They're the people you want to reach up to. Like, you you base your YouTube career off that stuff. Like, because I think the way to play YouTube is I know there's two ways to play it. Some people play it as a game to win. I don't do that. I have done that before, and I think it backfires horribly because um, you're just never going to win enough. Mm -hmm. But the other way to play YouTube is to just play the game kind of like. Kind of like you're being a deceptive player in Clue. Like, you you know where something is. You have something on your card that the other per- that you know, and you know a clue, and you haven't figured out. And you you know if you get over to that room, you can figure this out. But somebody else doesn't know you have that information. Mm-hmm. Um, that's that's kind of how it is. Like you you can man- people try to do power plays. What happens on YouTube is like, let's say you listen to a bunch of content, 
you start to get an understanding of what the kind of content is and what people like about it. And then you break off and make your own thing from that. And then your goal is to eventually reach that same kind of number or at least get a fraction of that audience from that number because that's your basis of ratings. Like, mm-hmm. let's say the highest rated show on TV is American Idol. Then you go, okay, we have to do a show like that on our network to get good ratings. That's yeah. what happens. So with YouTube, you go, okay, if H3H3 can make – if you can get to 3 million subs with that kind of content, it's possible for someone like me or you to make it to 3 million subs with that kind of content. Yeah. Like that's the goal. So you're thinking I can make that kind of money one day. I can make that kind of money where I am making – a lot of money and making and, and it's exciting because there's always the possibility like the lottery can happen but if youtube takes that incentive away the only incentive they're going to be able to offer is to give you some kind of business deal or sponsorships like right now in the middle of this podcast me and you should be like hey go to sheets you know and you know they should be giving us money that's uh, yeah i'm all for that like i'm all for that i'll be a shill i don't care i'll shill for products yeah but it's like uh, it's not even selling out like you're still doing it's exactly not what you do otherwise but it's not you're surviving yeah. Oh. Yeah, like, why do these companies even want to put the 10-second ad on the video? You know what would help it better? If you actually put the ad and you, like, told us, like, you can do whatever you want with it. Mm-hmm. Like, if they came to me and said, you're the patriarch, you can do whatever you want with ads. I would do, I would have whole sketches around the, the product. Yeah, actually, you know? you know who does that that I love and I think is really funny? I don't know if you watch the Game Grumps, but the Game Grumps oh, yeah, yeah. ad yeah, sketches and they're hilarious. Yeah. No, no, I've heard, I actually heard uh, one of them in an interview recently, and they were talking about that on a podcast, that why they do that specifically, like, because yeah. they just, they just want to, like, they just want to make fun of the whole concept of advertising something, because it is stupid to watch a commercial, because commercials just this yeah. lie, so when somebody has a product, they just straight up tell you, like, hey, man, they paid me to tell you about this, but if you actually try the product and like it, that's the thing I've noticed, like, like the candid thing blew up for a lot of people in this community because it wasn't what was advertised. But mm-hmm. like if somebody, if somebody, it's like let's say something I really like that I freaking love, like like Legos. If they came to me and said, "Will you advertise Lego?" But n- not to my channel, but something specific. Like, let's see, what would be closer to my channel? Let's say like something oh. that a con- conservative. Well, how? Let, let's use my channel as an example. It might be easier. Yeah, yours is like, better. Okay. I talk about video games, so say Nintendo's Nintendo. Like, hey, do something about the Nintendo Switch. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and we'll give you a switch, and you have to talk about it all the damn time, right? Yeah. You would do it, which I and you would have already. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. You would do it, and they would they would nothing but benefit from it. They would yeah. nothing but benefit because you would just make videos about the switch all the damn time, and you'd be like Nintendo, and then yeah. the title would pop up like. Dah! And the people and, who uh, want to want that sort of thing will benefit from it. I'll benefit from it. They'll benefit from it. Everyone wins. That's the that's the glorious thing about YouTube is that. When people don't get all up in arms about certain things that don't matter in the end, like, I generally see that everyone wins. Like, even I, who have made, like, uh, hardly anything on my channel, like, I still win because I get to make the content that I want. Some people get to enjoy it. And, it's fulfilling. You know, yeah, it is. I, I think it's very fulfilling to make YouTube videos. I think even if you don't, because I was doing it before. I was the same size as you, and I was uh, doing yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, like. What, what what was it like? Not even a year ago, we were the same size. Yeah, basically. and I was doing more videos than you were at the time. I think mm-hmm. I was doing a video like two a day at one point. I did more videos back then when I had less subscribers because yeah, I had the time. Yeah. And uh, I just kind of got obsessed with ranting. But um, yeah, I think it's fulfilling because you don't make the video for the people; you make the video for you mm-hmm. because it's something you're thinking. You about. don't know what people are gonna get it so why make it for someone you don't oh know i never exists. know what video is going to be popular or not popular you can't you can't control that till you get a certain kind of audience because when you're making something i made videos like six months ago like where i talk about aliens and when i upload that video I got no hits now it's got like ten thousand hits like six months later it starts getting hits out of nowhere yeah like huh like what is this catching on and it just happens like you, you don't you don't know um, they don't. Em- I will say I hate that YouTube does not embrace short films and, and, and series. Like you know, you you watched my web series that I made a while back. Yeah. There's no place for that on YouTube. And in my opinion, it's one of the best things I ever made. It's a really good web series. Yeah. No one, you can't get that on YouTube because people do not watch original. It had an original title. Everything about it was original. We weren't really referencing too much, so it's we couldn't a, it's sort title. Of the same thing that's happened with animation on YouTube because yes. you you put so much production value into a certain type of video but since it's the same length or shorter than other stuff that's easier to make like it's it's not going to make anything more so like and i agree there needs to be a better model there for certain types of projects. it was a mistake on youtube's part because i would much prefer to make those like 20 minute short or like a so than i would like 
laying there in a commentary video where I sit and talk on my microphone and add editing. I mean, you, you know, you watch my web series. He could tell you it had a lot more than most videos on YouTube do, like with the cutting. Oh, sure. and, and we were developing it. We wanted to develop a show over a course of time on YouTube for people who go on YouTube, like it's your TV show. Yeah. And I noticed that because I noticed there's not really any of it out there. And like you said, animation, they killed it because there was all this brilliant, I mean, brilliant original animation work on here. And then when they changed the algorithm for ads, they basically told animation channels like, well, you guys aren't going to make any money. And uh, it sucks because if YouTube was a platform for the middleman not existing, the producers or anything for animation. And like, why, is it, why isn't there independent films on YouTube? Where are, where are, like, wh like if you can't get your film shown at a film festival, yeah. why is it on YouTube? Like, why doesn't YouTube just buy it for nothing? And they could own yeah, the rights to it. Seems to make sense to me. Yeah, like if YouTube came and said, "I'll give you like," they like for one of my movies, like I made some second act. If they gave me, they wouldn't even have to give me a thousand dollars to buy that damn thing to put it on YouTube. And they're like, "Hey, we'll just put it on the platform. We'll own it. We'll release it. And we'll put it in our movie section, and people can click on it and watch it, like Netflix or something." Yeah, and they'd probably have enough money from monetization that they got from you to do something like that too. It's like I, I totally. didn't even lose anything. No, there's there's nothing but profits to be made on YouTube. It's one of the worst run companies. It's one. It's funny because Google runs their stuff pretty well. Like in concept, reason, it could be so even more lucrative than it is, and it already is. But oh, yeah, it could be. Right. It could be Amazon. It could be because they're basically competing to be Netflix. They're not competing to be YouTube. And I don't get that because YouTube's more powerful than Netflix. It's more powerful than yeah. Like uh, let, like Amazon complete. With compete with Netflix. Like, I, I feel like they're trying to do that with their original productions and stuff like that. I mean, if you want TV show movie content, then there are stream services out there. YouTube's not a stream service. YouTube is literally, it's almost like the most simplified form of entertainment because YouTube can literally be anything. So That's why I said. It's a radio. It's a radio. Because people used to sit around all day in, the, in you know, the Depression and post-World War II. What they do? They sit around and they listen to the radio all day. And there's something about that sitting and that, that focusing mm -hmm. and the, the vibrations. And I think what happened for a lot of years is people sat at home and they watched TV and the commercials and it got so monotonous and monotonous and monotonous. And then the Internet started kind of that way. The Internet used to be fucking crazy. It was like it was like a it was a pirate ship, to say the least. But yeah. now we, we kind of structured it. We kind of gave it to society because – there's a, there's so many meditative relaxation benefits to like listening to audiobooks on YouTube, but this is the radio like us talking, this going out there is somebody going on a radio and finding a station they like, and it's it's pirate radio. It can be whatever we want, and it's like it's like what those radio was always there. It was there in the rock and roll time, and even when it died off, it's like it's alive again. It's just not what it was because it's not in the airwaves. But we're the radio. Yeah, we're putting digital. It's digital radio. We're putting out digital airwaves, and they're reaching people, and it's making an impact. It is. It is clearly making an impact. And uh, what's what's brilliant about YouTube is it's. It's not the same like anywhere else. Like what I love about watching Stranger Things on Netflix or watching Game of Thrones, something that is not the same thing as what it's like when you're on YouTube listening exactly. to someone talk or something like that. And because being, we want variety, we want something that yes. doesn't feed into our boredom, but rather the opposite. Like that's and the humanity. There's so much humanity on YouTube. There's flawed people. Yeah. Um, there's it, real it's, people. There's real people. I mean, that's like why I vlog. I mean, which there's a lot of fake people who do it too, and they might yeah. be more successful. But, yeah, it's sort of, I don't know. It, it, everybody wants different things. So, yeah, I mean, we're just sort of talking about, like, in general, like, the philosophy of YouTube. Yeah. It's like YouTube doesn't even get their own philosophy. They don't. Most of their content creators seem to understand. Well, the fact that we love making the content is the biggest difference, I think, from a lot of other places. It's like, yeah. it's, it's people who are self-centered they are a little you know i was getting attacked by friends today. like you talk too much you're self-centered i go i'm a youtuber of course i am um it's it's the place you come to you know to, if you're an artist i feel if you have some kind of artist being a writer or whatever you want to be you, you're somebody and you can't find the thing it's a place to come where you can be an artist and you don't need the money to you know direct a movie or be on a tv show you can you can format it kind of your own way it's kind of like yep. theater like you can format videos the way you want to you can and it's weird there's there's certain things like i i have certain images and certain music and certain ways i edit that i would only really do on youtube and it only exists because of youtube and i can't explain it to people who don't get it 
Like, you try to explain it to people, and you're like, I can't go into the intricacies of this because it's just years and years of shit. Yeah. Like, it's not... It's like America's Funniest on Videos kept evolving, and then it got to a point where, like, people were sending in tapes to America's Funniest on Videos intentionally, and they were blogging and stuff. It's like I blew up into this whole idea of, like, like, man, I can make a video about anything. And at first, that I think people, like, you know, when I wanted to make a series and stuff, I think people wanted to, like be creative with that but then the more and more people realized it was a platform for you to interact with people and that's where it became like theater like it's a one man show basically except the audience isn't there or it's like radio or it's like stand up like I'm a stand up comedian because I tell jokes in a microphone with people love. I'm a journalist because I report on news I'm a filmmaker because I make short films with this it's very weird to think you're multiple things all at once and that didn't exist before and I don't think yeah. the media knows how to adapt to it. I think that's why they don't get YouTube and Twitter and Facebook and stuff because they don't get that. Um, it's it, it's like people like trolling. They like certain type of humor. They like certain type of content. They don't like – I mean they basically just don't like boring, safe stuff. I mean I, I don't think there's really many places on the internet people like boring. You know, yeah. they, don't like, they don't like something they can't talk crap about. Um, at the end of the day, and I think the problem is YouTube is a platform of a bunch of shit talkers. It's a soap opera box, and people love watching the soap opera unfold, and they're trying to cancel everyone's favorite soap opera. And if they do that, people are going to go to a soap opera somewhere else because this is the biggest mistake Google's made, I think, from business standpoint. And Google TV, I mean, YouTube TV is an awful idea. I think it's an absolute terrible idea. The fact that you think people are going to pay a monthly subscription to watch TV that they already have on YouTube, um, when most young people today don't even buy cable, um, it's just a backwards strategy. Is it, um, did YouTube exist because it's like not TV? Why yeah. are we regressing? I mean, it's a contradiction. It's a whole contradiction of the idea of YouTube. It's and why you. do you want the creators who fi- like fuel YouTube TV like need to make something? I mean, it's like. You had the late night TV show example, and you even like some late night TV, as do I. But it's like, they're like, okay, we need to make this show every day of the week, and it needs to happen, and it's going to happen no matter what, whatever quality. But for YouTubers, it's literally like, I really want to make a video about this, and I may or may not hold myself to a schedule because I want to, and uh, let's see who likes that. I'm trying a new experiment uh, for fun because I'm trying to branch out a little bit where I'm just making videos about dumb things I think about. Yeah. So, like, there's the scene in Point Break, the Keanu Reeves movie, where he gets a pit bull thrown at him by Patrick Swayze's character during a chase scene. Yeah. And he catches the pit bull and punts it. And it goes, Rrr! and I think about that scene all the time. And it's a famous clip on YouTube. And I've watched that movie, like, a hundred times. I've seen Point Break over and over again, and I love it. And it's just, like, two-second shot. And I've sit around with friends and talked about the scene, like, who came up with that? Why is that in there? This is Catherine Vigolo. She won an Academy Award for The Hurt Locker. Who came up with the dog kicking? So I just, I just the other day, I said, fuck it, I'm going to make a video about it. So I make this 10-minute video. Yeah, you can explain break... that, that friends environment thing into, like, a community of people. Yeah, and then people start commenting, and they're like, oh, shit, because I'm sitting there like, so what, did Keanu's mom come on the set and ask him, like, so what are you doing today? And he's like, oh, I'm kicking a dog. She's like, huh? And I started to break down, like, was it an improvised thing? Did did they think it was just funny? Did did it did it have a metaphor for I tried to did, like give a deep analysis. I was like, was it him getting the weight of his insecurities thrown at him and he had to kick them away? I mean I try I go into all these things because these are what I sit around and think about it. Some it's like what stand ups do. It's like you, you, yeah. you think you observe something that's and then you, you, you keep blowing it up. And that's what I do, and I, I'm trying this new thing with videos like I've always thought these things about Tim Burton's Batman. And I've been fighting with this video for six months because, like, I don't want to make a video about Tim Burns, Batman, and piss off Batman fans. And I go, no, I can't stop thinking. It's like a catharsis because once you make the video, it's out. It's out. It's done. You said it. You made it. And it's almost a relief. You're like, okay, I got this out of the way because, like, I'm so proud of that Point Break video. Like, I love it. I think it's so funny. I think it's so well. It's, it's like eight years of thoughts I've had on the scene from Point Break, and I break down every thought. I, and I go into the production of the movie and everything, and I try to decipher like, I'm Googling it, like, why did he kick the dog? And I can't find my answers, and I want to start things like that. Like, I used to have a thing for years where I wondered what Toto's Africa meant, and I spent years trying to decipher that song. Yeah. And then I Googled it and found out what it was, and I kind of want to make a video about that stuff, like, my journey to find out the meaning of Toto's Africa. Love and I think that's a really funny idea. Me too. I think that's a funny idea of content. Like, 
it's just anything. Like I was focusing on certain yeah. type of content, but I'm loving this idea where it's like, I'm just going to get up in this weird thing that's like so unique to me, like this crazy thought. Yeah. Like, why, why do I think about Africa so much? Why do I think about what that song means or the lyrics? And I want to talk about, like, my journey to get through there because everyone experiences that in a different way for different things. So when you yeah. let people relate to it, they totally get what you're doing. And then and then you have them, and then it's engaging and compelling. And I can say from experience, that's what made the angry video game nerd great. Yeah. If you saw a guy bitching playing a shitty video game that didn't work. Yeah, and then we all had that moment of realization yeah. that we were like, Wait, I'm not alone? I'm not the only one who goes no. crazy about video games? You know, like, you get mad. You're like, man, Batman Forever, the game sucks. Jesus. Back, I mean, I remember that game. I remember renting it and playing yeah. it and getting so mad. And he taps into it. That's how you freaking feel. You're mad at Or nostalgia critic. Like, you go yeah. back and look at these movies you watched as you were a kid and you loved them, and they suck now. They're awful. They're, like, badly written. They're, like, Three Ninjas or something. You're like, man, when I was a kid, this movie was amazing. Yeah. And you realize how dumb you were as a kid. Like you just like stuff because you had no perspective, and you, you tap into it. You know that's or commentary channels like what H three does. He'll take something that's like, you know, you're thinking this, and then they say it, and you're so relieved someone said it. Or I dubs like with content copies like, we all know Leafy shit. I'm just gonna say it, and then he did it beautifully. And then now Leafy like everyone hates Leafy. It's like and everyone was feeling it. It's like everyone like us the smaller guys were like, how the hell is that guy popular? Yeah, like that guy's terrible. Like, my, my videos are so much better. And then finally, the big two YouTubers all started to say, like, oh, yeah, he is. He is terrible. <laughs> and uh, the one thing I love about the YouTube community is that it kind of controls itself. It's an in-home economy. It, it, yeah. Well, it's it, like la ladies fair or whatever you pronounce it for the economy. It's like if yeah. you leave things alone, it will just organically operate. And that's well, how the marketplace, not just for money, but also for ideas, should be. And that's what well, YouTube is. It's like... It's an if somebody fucks up, the marketplace of ideas. If somebody messes up on YouTube, they get called out by everyone else on YouTube. Yeah, it just always. It's self-regulating, so we don't need YouTube itself to just try to shut all of these benefits that we've been listing down. Really. No, all we've listed as benefits, and I'm trying to think of as many negatives that can counter, but there's really not that many. And if they if they are if they do exist, then it's probably YouTube who did it. I agree. I, it was Google that made a bad decision. Yeah. It's like, uh, yeah, you should have stopped making the trending tab, all the stuff that were, you, you, not, like you said, like not the stuff that's actually popular from the original content creators. Because yeah. like, that's stupid. That's not trending. That late night talk show thing's not trending. That's something that's all over the internet and you're putting it on YouTube. That's not trending on YouTube. Put up something that's a YouTube video. Yeah. It's popular, not a movie like, trailer. It's like, yeah, of course the Justice League trailer's trending. <laughs> yeah, like it's like go all the way back to the racist video on YouTube thing, and it's like, yeah, people are gonna watch what they want to watch. So, or what, 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 and no one wants to watch like that. So, is there even really a reason to report on it? Because he's reporting on it is making it a bigger deal. So it's like, no one really accepts those kind of radical things anymore. So if you just left it alone, whether it's a glitch, whether it's really weird or whatever like i don't know it, it it's better left alone because it's gonna fizzle out instead of become a huge big thing well the guys who originally created it i don't think they i think they might have fucked up i don't think they realized what they had when they sold it to google for two billion i don't think they basically realized like the format how they came up with the site is like perfect yeah it really is they it was like left it alone they should i know it was we, perfect we don't need trending we don't need youtube no. heroes we don't need youtube red or TV, or yeah. we don't need any of that. It's not. Well, it's like early Facebook. Early Facebook was like perfect. It's like the original, the original Facebook platform was a perfect, simple uh, platform. And they, the more now, now all it is is people sharing memes like Tumblr. What I used to love about yeah, Facebook like was that you could, things. you couldn't share memes and gifs on Facebook all day, so it didn't become that website. Now that's literally all Facebook is anymore. It used to be people had to write out posts and you would talk to people. It was actually a great site at one point. Yeah. I'm um, same with YouTube. It was all about communication. Now, the fact that I'm having to compete with someone like Jimmy Fallon is just ridiculous. Yeah. That makes no. Jimmy Fallon doesn't know who I am. Like when he's competing against Jimmy Kimmel or something, they know each other. You know, they don't give a shit about me, is I don't give a shit about yeah. them. You know, it's it's it's. They, I don't think the two should meet. I think they can exist, but I don't like... The, like, YouTube shouldn't be TV, and TV shouldn't be YouTube. I agree. Like, you're never going to see Game of Thrones on YouTube either. 
Yeah. You know, and that's something you're going to watch on HBO. So I understand that. There's never going to be anything on YouTube that's as good as The Godfather, probably. Yeah. But I've seen comedy videos on here or animation videos that I say are some of the best stuff I've ever seen. Oh, yeah. I, I laugh way more on YouTube than I have at movies or television, for example. I mean... Oh, yeah. And it's consistent. They'll make a video all the time and they're funny. No, they and you're like, make how a video do you... every day. Or, yeah, I mean... And it's right. like, how do you do or... this? How do you make a video funny every day? It blows my mind. People do it. There's people who make videos all the time, and they're funny all the damn time. It's like, how are you this funny? Yeah, I mean, and, it's honestly, it's like we're, like, spoiled because we are at least old enough to have grown up in times without all of this. So it's oh, like, yeah, yeah we, we do sort of have kind of a perspective of, like, man, this is awesome. Why can't we just keep it awesome? Because we love it. We love that yeah. we could just listen to shit and, like, do what we want, and we loved it, and now they're trying to, like, say... Uh, you don't want that. It's like, well, dude, I remember when you when it was that way everywhere. Yeah, it, no, like, there's, a, had there's a few specific things that you can't do or even mention, or else you'll trigger the half the world, so you can't do this. Because uh, also, like, literally, the only YouTube changes, and there are very few that I think have been good in the past few years, have been like cosmetic things. Like, oh yeah, I guess cards do look a little bit sexier than annotations, for example. So I'm like, oh okay, yeah, that that's cool. That makes sense. But like. I would rather not have things like that if you stop treating us like just numbers or or dehumanizing us or whatever. Yeah, I don't like being a number. That's my issue. That's which, to a certain extent, we are. And like, yeah, I understand that. But I mean, the fact that you know, like PewDiePie, as you said, like can't even talk to YouTube higher ups for all we know and get things figured out is truly bizarre to me. It's well, it scares you because you're like, okay, what if I do get a million subs? Does that mean I could just lose it all one day? Well, yeah, and, and, it, and it's intimidating beyond belief because it's like, well, if that if that's how they're being treated, there's no way I could even make it to that point anyway. Um, yeah, know. that's it's completely – no, and I've heard the channels that like have 300, 400,000 subs, like they're not making – you know, because those guys who have a few million subs, they're still making enough money to get – you know, to do well. Yeah. Well, let's say you have 100,000 subs and you were making $100, $200 a video. You're not making that kind of money anymore. Yeah, the I mean, I've heard some channels too. I mean, it's like, yeah. Yeah, no, no some of the guys I know that I hear them talk, like the 100,000 channels that, you know, they're going to, you know, they're having to get a job again and stuff. Yeah, and, which means you're losing content and the yeah. the platform's going to become less interesting and less uh, have less variety. Well, you're basically going to get people that will only make videos because they have the free time, which is a lot of people. You know, like me, I have a lot of free time, but mm -hmm. that's. That's only that's only gonna like fare out so well for so many people. Yeah, like, there's only gonna be so many people. The, the majority is going to be very uninteresting people that have nothing going on. Yeah, and it's like oh. I have free time now, or at least I make myself have free time as a college student. But you know, if if like say I was bigger and um, you know things like the under review thing were happening and like screwing me over, then I'm like, well, yeah. Once I have like a real job, you know, probably not gonna do it anymore. So. But it's the thing, like, the fear that, like, yeah, I might not be able to pay my bills this month because my YouTube videos are controversial. Mm -hmm. That's, like, that's like a weird fear to have. It's, like, something I would have never thought of in the past. Uh, Again, and like, it, why isn't freedom of speech and, like, why isn't it being rewarded? Like, why is it being punished? Once again, that's what YouTube should celebrate about themselves. They should say we're the free speech platform of the Internet. They yeah. should just say it. They should declare it like we are. And that's a completely non-political thing to say, too. That's not left. That's not right. That's literally America. And yeah, that's got its start here in America. Like, well, it's, a, it's the one thing I think that traditional liberals and conservatives can agree on. I don't mean radical liberals because they're anti-freedom of speech, but I mean traditional. Yeah. I think the center is we all agree on those fundamentals that the exactly. freedom of speech thing. And I think you, I think what YouTube could do could be the center platform for everyone to discuss these things and find a middle ground. Unfortunately, they're clearly left leaning, and the website content creators are kind of right leaning that we're seeing. With you know, yeah. John or it's almost or like this type of thing where maybe maybe no one's really leaning, or maybe like there is one side that's leaning, but once one side leans one way, then the other side or other party has to be viewed as leaning the other way. Because I don't think of you as a like right person. Maybe maybe you are, but no, I'm not. But I would get I mean, labeled like, that. Literally said like, oh, I campaigned for Obama, and like, oh wait, basically, and it's like. But because of the situation you're put in a lot of times by YouTube itself, it's like, yeah, you must be right because YouTube is left and you guys are at odds. Like, I don't even know why does it have to be that way. It's not that simple. 
Well, speaking of that, I just got a great comment because I made this video a few days ago. I don't know if it blew up on the internet. Um, it was about that kid who wrote Black Lives Matter a hundred times on his Stanford I, yeah, I application. Yeah, that actually. Yeah. That's okay, so weird. everyone misrep misrepresented that story and said the kid just got into Stanford because of that. That's what everyone did on YouTube, and I and I made my video specifically. It was my first. I made the video specifically to say this kid has like a high GPA. He was already in Yale and Princeton. And did other things to get into Stanford. The only reason he got he got in no matter what. He had nothing. To, like I said, if you're an idiot and you do that, you're not going to get into Stanford. Yeah. But everyone represented the story um, as he just did that and got in. And that's how the left represented it in celebration. Then the skeptic community, the member I'm part of, they also represented it that way to attack the university and Black Lives Matter and stuff. And like this guy just left a comedy said, you're the only one not misrepresenting the story. Cough, cough, Andy Worski, who does that kind of stuff all the time. And I thought you were a partisan hack at first. At least I know you're honest, which I love that part. Because they assume you're partisan if you, like, defend Trump or something in a video. But then later yeah. on, people fight with someone like me. It's like, no, I'm literally looking at the facts and evidence and giving you the most clear – with a bit of opinion. Yeah. But, but to like, make it fun, to, like – to keep it fresh, you know? Well, I mean, what like, I did in my video, I made fun of the guy. I think it's stupid he wrote Black Lives Matter a hundred times on his application. So I made fun of him. I, I made fun of that. that's stupid, too. What does that even... It, yeah, that's why it's I just, watched your video, because I was like, what? Yeah. Because that was the first For, time I heard about it. Virtue signaling, that's all he's doing. But everyone else who makes that video is like, this is what universities are doing. They just accept you for this. I go, no, they accept really smart teenagers with high GPAs and stuff like that. Into that. Yeah. Um, and yeah, everyone else, and that's my issue, is that the YouTubers, if they want to beat the mainstream media, if you want to beat TV, you have to be more honest. Yeah. That's the only way we're going to win is if we don't lie. Um, yep. We have to be honest, and we have to admit when we mess up, and we have to be willing to be wrong. Like, you have to be willing to say something you'd be wrong about. Yeah. And you also have to be willing to uh, say something that no one else is saying, even if the rest of the community – He's saying it, and you think that's the right opinion. You know, I've gone against the grain on many videos um, from everyone else in the community. I've, I've you know, like, you know, because everyone usually starts getting one opinion. Yeah. And uh, I think everyone just starts parroting each other. I don't like being a parrot, so I try to look at it and go, okay, what do I think about this? And then I find out I eventually have something about it that I find that no one else has really quite said yet, or, or the way I see it totally. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's interesting. And the people who are really good at that. They're the people that seem to do well on YouTube. Um, and yeah. I, I think, yeah, I, I, I don't like, I don't like the YouTube community in the sense that like, it is a bunch of egomaniacs fighting each other. But at the same time, um, I'm all for the smaller channels that benefit from those egomaniacs fighting with each other. Trickle down economics actually works on YouTube. It's uh, the one place trickle down. You know, Reaganomics is amazing because if the big channels do well, it does trickle down yeah. onto the small channels. Like if you get a shout-out from a big channel, it benefits your channel. And making content similar to that benefits you. So I think I think what sucks is they're, they're interfering with that, that system that we figured out. And now I don't know what system to follow because there's no rules. I don't know what the rules are anymore on YouTube. I don't know what kind of videos to make. I don't know yeah. what kind of content to make. And I was kind of figuring it out. Yeah, and there was like... Should there even be many rules in the first place? There shouldn't be this many standards. Also, I want to jump back to the thing, like you said, like, oh, you're a partisan hack because you defended this position on your, uh, oh, which you make fun of consistently. Like, you're the yeah. patriarchy because you just think the whole thing is just stupid and hilarious. Yeah, well, that's um, the whole concept is like, yeah, being partisan, it's like, it's like, uh, yeah, everyone is. Yeah. Like, the, to think that you're not biased is a, a, a laughable concept, and to think that you're not stuck up and thinking you're right on a lot of things is also because mm -hmm. most people are. Oh yeah, and I know that. You think you're right. You you form opinions because you logically or irrationally or whatever. You think this because of this, and but I also hate it when people think that the that's all there is. Like yeah. you said, like I mean, I'm a journalist, so it's sort of my job to hold people accountable of all types. It, I mean, if I shit on Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump on my talk show does does that mean i'm an anarchist because apparently i'm not a republican or a democrat so i can't go anywhere so it's like what why yeah like why why um... well it's 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 the it's my main issue with it is that you can't people don't want to be honest it's what i don't like it's if, mm -hmm. I, this is an sjw thing i'm going to blame society um 
the one thing I hate about society more than anything, and I've said my life, and a lot of people disagree with me on this, and I understand their point of view. I think there shouldn't be a lot of those rules they have when you're in school, when you work at a job. Like, I believe in, I, I kind of have a libertarian mindset. I think if you work at a job and you don't like the guy you're working with and you want to go up to him and tell him to fuck off, I think you have the right to do that without getting fired. Yeah. Um, I want to live in that world because we never get to release that tension and feelings that we have. So then it just gets built up and people get freaking miserable and so then they take it, it out. In and places. They do it in other places. They start to take it out. And you take your, you take out your anger at your boss somewhere else. And I think, I think we should, the, the way to fix it would be to have less rules in general. I really do. I think I think eventually a system will come in, uh, like naturally people will fix it. Because imagine in school if you could have said what you wanted a lot more, how much better it would have been. I mean, just for me in general, if I didn't feel so filtered all the time, because it's intimidating yeah. to be filtered, um, and it's not freeing. And you know, and that's that's what made YouTube great was because people like me or you, I think, who kind of always had that issue with political correctness. So basically, saying you're against PC culture, it's basically against people who are telling you what to do and what to say. Yeah, because I mean that's basically all it is. They're telling you that it's not correct in the context of a political society, like a civilization that's reached this. Which, which everything is political nowadays. So it basically yeah. says that hey, you can't say this ever, no matter what, no matter the context. Yeah. And I wanna, I wanna live in a world where that is just no longer a conversation. I don't want to have that debate anymore. I think it's over. I think the debate was ended a long time ago by philosophers. But it's not or, because yeah. big platforms like YouTube or the Wall Street Journal or whoever it is like makes it still a conversation. In fact, like bigger than it's been in a long time. Well, my favorite thing is going back to the writer thing in like the Wall Street Journal. My favorite thing I always see in articles because I've been covering so many lately, and I'm starting to pick up patterns. Yeah. When somebody like in a, in a uh, like a magazine or a website or a newspaper like New York Times, if they write something about something they they clearly don't get and they're trying to be hip. They're like, now I like to think of myself as someone who has a dark sense of humor, but I don't find PewDiePie's jokes very nice. And I'm like, okay, you just said you like to consider yourself a dark sense of humor, and then you're offended by a joke. That means you do not have a dark sense of humor at all. But like, they're trying to prove a point. <laughs> yeah, they're trying to be like, I like to think I do. It's like, no, you don't. You wouldn't be writing this article, you moron. Like, it's – like. Why don't you let the comedians write the joke? I mean, even now, I come do videos on Patton Oswalt and Sarah Silverman all the time because both of them consistently contradict themselves. And they're people. I used to be a huge Patton Oswalt fan, and he's consistent. He shared fake stories on his Twitter that weren't real, and then when I call him out for it, he won't say anything. He won't retract it. He won't say he was wrong. And then he'll shame other people for doing the same stuff later. And then he retweets stuff from like Keith Olbermann. And I go, dude, if you're gonna tell me that Trump's crazy, you can't be sharing stuff from a nutbag like Keith Olbermann too. Like, you have to acknowledge the crazy people on the left as much as you do on the right. Like, you can't just be like, everyone who's conservative is crazy, everyone who's liberal is crazy. It's like, well, some of them are, not all of them are. Like, I don't think I don't think he's a, a psychopath. I don't think he's a crazy guy. I don't think he was a crazy guy when he was running. Uh, no one said it. But I remember back when Mitt Romney was running, everyone was calling him Hitler then to those conversations. Yeah. It was like, oh, that guy's a racist and stuff. And I was like, is he? I think he is. Um, and that's... that. That we didn't see how that was play out. How bad it led to thing like we just punished because we acted like children, so we got a child president. Yeah, because that's what we deserve. Like, it's like on YouTube though. I don't feel like a lot of us did anything to deserve the way we are being treated on there specifically. And at the end of the day, like that's what we've been talking about for the past two hours. So. Yeah, I don't know. It's like, eh. It's sort of like that nihilistic thing at the end. It's like, well, can I do anything about it? Well, no. I want to be like an abusive... I want to be like a Stockholm syndrome. I want to be like, you don't know YouTube like I do. It actually really loves me. They're going to bring the ad revenue back, I promise. And I got like a black eye. And I'm like, don't, don't worry. I just fell. Video that is... Like I have a black eye. Well, I did, make a, I did make one video. It was called I Love Feminine. And the whole video, I take an article that is completely, like this article, this woman wrote, I mean, it's like just all the classic SJW tropes, and everything she says negative, I sarcastically talk about how she's right, and the whole time I talk about, like, you know, I want to do this revenue, so and then the, the way I structure what I love about it is I spend the whole first half of the video talking about how great she is, right? Yeah. And then later, I show posts she made that completely contradicts and shows she's a hypocrite for what she said, and I go... Wait, why would you say that? And then I act really upset because <laughs> I trusted her. And then I start talking about it that way, like I'm upset because it's 
it, and that was so fun because usually I would just take the thing and then point out she's a hypocrite. But to structure it in that way to try and be safer, like I'm being a, a PC person, and then when she turns yeah. against me, I'm like, oh, you mean stuff like that. And I made a wear on the video. So uh, I really think it's more creative. <laughs> That's how I felt, like, uh, yeah, like the mother of invention. I felt, because uh, the idea was like, okay, well, if I have to work around this, I'm going to mock it. Yeah. Um, and that's what I've always said. That's where the patriarchy came from. It was like, all right, well, if you're going to talk about this, I'm just going to make it real. Like, because now, now yeah. I love it when people new people say smash the patriarchy or stuff like that on my Facebook comment. I always get to, like, reply back, like, you want to fuck me? Or, um, <laughs> or, like, you know, like, we got to, you want to kill me? Or, um... Or people ask me my video, they're like, why'd you make a video about this? It has nothing to do with you. I said, they mentioned the patriarchy in the video like 15 times. What are you talking about? Like, it had everything to do with me. <laughs> that's my name. <laughs> yeah, no, and that's the whole joke. Like, some guy, because that's how I felt. Like, that's the only way I can relate it, is that I was some guy named Pat Rierarchy, basically, and everyone kept telling me I was the patriarchy, and I'm like, what? I didn't have anything to do with the Ghostbusters movie bombing. And then I had to defend myself. <laughs> yep. And that was the whole basis, and that's now evolved into, like, just this insane thing, because it started, it yeah. was just kind of, I wore a Halloween mask and I made jokes, and I thought I was going to do it once. It was like, it was yeah. just an idea for one video, it was like, I'm going to do the patriarchy and I'm going to play this character, then it did so well, people fell in love, I can't believe no one even really thought of it before either, Yeah. to, to do the patriarchy as a character completely, it's a and good then, concept. yeah, like the boogeyman, and then I started to realize it was kind of a gimmick, and I was like, oh, I could use this. And um, that's that's but the whole the whole thing started from it's somebody who doesn't like being misrepresented for what they're not because mm. they're associated with it even by just name, right? You know, yeah. Because I'm a white guy, I'm racist, and that's where it came from. Yeah. And I think I think that's what people connect with when they hear at the beginning, "Hey, my name's Pat Ryarkey, also known as the Patriarchy." You're either immediately with me on that moment or you're not. But if you're with me on that moment, you get it. You know, you get it. You're like, oh my god, this guy gets it. Yeah, this guy totally, you know, he gets how I feel, and that's 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 something YouTube offers because you know it's a real person doing that for you. It's not somebody that spent time in a writer's room and spent a lot of time, you know, like Stranger Things. I love that show, but yeah. ultimately the guys who made that show don't know who I am. I didn't affect their lives, but the YouTubers you do, yes, you really do, and they yeah. affect you, and it's like family almost in a sense with the with the negatives that come with it. Yeah. Um, and I, I love that. I think of us like as a really fucked up Waltons. Yeah. You know? And uh, that's, that's, that's how I see it. We're like the Waltons. Like, we get along, we say goodnight at the end of the day, but it's messed up. Things aren't yeah. perfect. And Daddy, corporate Google, Yeah. He, he's sort of stuck in his ways, but maybe we can. Night, turn John around. Boy. Good night, Google. <laughs> night, Facebook. Night, Twitter. <laughs> Good night. But yeah, I think. I think we've said everything that we wanted yeah, to. Yeah, I'm sorry if I went on longer than I was supposed to. No, I super enjoy this, but holy crap. we could, I, I am under the impression, I mean, because we've done this twice now, that yeah. if we had nothing else in our lives going on, we could probably, I don't even know when we would stop talking, actually, because... Well, I, I like talking to you for that reason, because a lot yeah. of people, um, I notice they wait to respond, and they don't listen. I've mm -hmm. noticed that trend of thought, and I get accused of that, but it's just because I kind of talk fast, so people think I'm that way. I'm actually a very acute listener. I listen to what people are saying. I mean, yeah. very much. Um, well, I mean, my job is listening half the time. Yeah. So I mean, I like I talking know. to you because you kind of—it's not like an interview, but it's it's formal. Like you can talk, and then you get a response, and you respond back. There's not a lot of talking over each other, and there's exactly. um. I mean, there's a, again, Eric's talk is a niche thing that exists on YouTube and absolutely could not exist anywhere else. So, Well, I think I think you have a future as someone kind of like a Charlie Rose, because I was a huge Charlie Rose fan when he used to interview people, because he had really good questions, and he would let them talk. And he kind of found a way, and I think, uh, yeah, I think you'd be, I think in the, you know, because you're still young, but you know, the way that I think Bill Maher really messes up on his show, because he just has a bunch of people yelling at each other. Yeah. I think there's a future for the people who are really good at constructing conversations between other people and letting them play out for the audience's benefit and kind of tricking the person into saying more than they mean to. Yeah. Um, That's actually and, sort of my my purpose half on this channel because my show, Voices of Eagle, is the posters in my room. Like, that was basically what that was about as well. Except it was on TV. It had to be, like, 26 minutes. But this, we can go on for two hours, 11 minutes, and 41 seconds. 
and still feel like we have like a shit ton to say. Which oh, is that show would have been awesome. I would have loved to. I mean, I was on your your thing, but I would have loved to have been on League of yeah. Legends if it was completely like unlimited, uncensored. Like yeah, if it was just like that's right. Like, if you could just sit here and do whatever you want the whole time for, like, an hour, and we'll just talk about whatever we want and stuff, I think that would be an amazing show. I would have loved yeah. it. I think that would have been, like, hilarious. But, like, yeah, they format you even on that. They tell you you have to obey these rules. Yeah, and, which is uh, okay to an extent, but, I mean, yeah. that's why we have the freedom of different platforms and hopefully but our freedom. don't do that, you two. Don't be the college that this guy goes to. Please don't be that. <laughs> like, yeah. be better. Be better than this. <laughs> yeah. Like, don't be Berkeley. Be something else. I mean, the reason is, like, yeah, YouTube's not supposed to be traditional. So we should stop acting like it should be. Well, so we're not I mean, traditional. That's that's my closing thought. We're not a traditional guy. You're not... I wouldn't say you're a hardcore liberal conservative. I don't think I'm a hardcore liberal conservative. Yeah. Uh, I, I think, think we the may... reason we have so much to talk about is because we are not... I'm, I'm not... Part, I don't consider myself partisan. I don't consider myself affiliated. At all to anything, really. That's that's why I hate when I get called partisan because I'm just kind of like, well, dude, I don't, I've never affiliated with that stuff. I don't, I don't label. Yeah, that's uh, not how I actually feel. I decide like what I think and what I act and do based on things, not labels. You know. Well, that's I, what I want people to get sort of... about the patriarchy. You know, is that it's the patriarchy saying those things, mm-hmm. not me. Yeah. You know, that's Pat Ryerke saying those things. It's not me. Because they are two different. Like, the guy I'm being right now is not the guy I am in those videos. Yeah. There's a different way of speaking. and Which, perhaps it, for some people, there's, like, that level of subtlety that they can't get past. They're like, oh, this guy's yeah. an asshole. <laughs> but, yeah, because that's what it is. Because I'm really not. I'm actually, like, I told you, like, I'm not an ass. I'm actually a pretty nice guy. Or at least I think I am. I try to be a nice guy. Yeah, but, like, you may get this idea I'm, like, a harsh asshole for my videos. But, yeah. like, I, I'm not at all. It's just... That's what I find entertaining. Like, I like making messed up jokes and making fun of... I, I, I'm not pro-bullying, like, being mean to people, but I'm pro-being able to make fun of people for stupid things always. And I think yeah. if I'm not allowed to make fun of people, then I have no purpose. Um, you know, if I can't, you know, I mean, if I can't look at something stupid and make fun of it, um, and it's... I don't know, I mean, I guess we've just been going in circles, but basically uh, Google Google's locking us in cyber prison... Yeah, and it's uh, we need to it's, break out of this dystopia. Yeah, please no. help send money. Uh, Domo Arigato, Mr. Roboto, please. Um, you need to yeah. come save us because that's what that song was about. Actually, I just found that out. It was about like really? corporate overlord trying to control the music industry oh, and turn sure. them into robots, and that's basically what's happening to us. So I'm starting a new thing. Domo Arigato, Mr. Roboto, YouTube. We need to be saved by Mr. Roboto in the same way that Sticks was. Um, so, so please, Mr. Roboto, if you're out there, please save Sweet. us. Uh, uh, Donald Trump, if you could tweet about this, that would probably help. Yeah, that'd be great. Uh, um, Daddy, Daddy, help us out, please. Yeah, um, please. Um, if you're no, if he... watching on my channel, go check out RJ's channel. If you're watching on his channel, check out my channel. Um, I will say, if my subscribers watch this, the ones out there, I would very recommend going to his channel because I, I am a fan of this kind of... I actually think smaller channels are far superior to the big channels right now because... The videos are longer, they have way more to them, it's more consistent, and uh, you'll get more out of them. You may not get the, the quick cutting and the production value of some things, but yes, like his videos, you'll sometimes you'll get these three-hour blogs, and you may not like all of them, but the ones that are interesting, like going through a day in his life, you will like. And, you know, it's worth watching for that, or it's worth watching. You may not agree with him how he's talking about Zelda, but you may totally love how he talks about something else. And yeah. that's, that's, that's the that's kind the of channel it is, right? Yeah. That's the kind of channel it is. Like, you can watch different... Like, he, he literally makes, like, five, six different types of things, so you can just pick what you want. Yeah. Well, my channel, if you're basically not... going to a blessing the... or a curse, depending on what kind of yeah. viewer you are, so... So I say to I'm people sorry, watching this, his stuff's, his stuff's good in the sense that, like, it's a multimedia channel, and I think it's fairly objective when it comes to factual stuff. Thank you. Yes, where I, I try. I'm much try. more of a comedic, over-the-top, satirical channel. Yeah, Wait, I mean, uh, I try to be... A journalist, but like again, like you on your channel, not completely. At least when I'm on YouTube, because I don't know, life should just be more fun on YouTube. And it should be more fun on YouTube. But yeah, I don't take it. It's not like yeah, yeah. it's not like I can't get fired. Yeah, <laughs> That's what I exactly. like, I'm not gonna get a call like, hey, uh, you gotta you gotta take that video down, or we're gonna fire you. It's like uh, they don't know who I am. Yeah. Um. And that's, Seriously. And that's what I love about YouTube, but I, I really like your channel, and I, I hope it grows. I think it deserves to grow. I think there's so many big channels that are way worse than yours, not even – I mean, you do you do what you do so much better than what a lot of other people do. 
Thank um, you. they get they get millions of hits. And uh, I definitely relate because I had you know only a hundred something subscribers at one point. But I will say yeah. I did this for ten years before anything ever happened. I went through. Oh yeah, episode. no, you, like you deserve you deserve it. I was so, like, holy shit, when it happened, I was like, damn, that's about time. Yeah, well, it's but, but I would say people people just want to give up, and you don't give up. Yeah. You're still making videos, and that's one thing I tell people: is don't give up. They give up, and they don't want to put the work in. It's like, dude, it takes a long time. Yeah. It does. It does. It's like you can't just assume you're going to become because if you could, everyone would be doing it. Exactly. That's why. That's why YouTube. It does take some kind of skill because not everyone can get a million subscribers. I mean, maybe yeah, if you're a hot girl and you show off your body a lot and you, you put, but that's or you're Spider Man and Elsa. And yeah, <laughs> but for the most part, the cool thing about YouTube is that yeah, is that there's communities that share the type of stuff like i know there's a there's a huge amount of subscribers out there that would love your channel that watch other channels they just haven't found it yet yeah that's all so it is give up and also don't give up on fighting daddy youtube well do you too be yourself and people will find it that like you yes because not everyone's going to like you and that's something you gotta accept early on with youtube is Absolutely. that you're going to get a lot of like you suck fag go swallow right. a knife a hole and that, you know. I'm okay with that. We're all okay with that. And at the end of the day, what we have to remember is, thanks for watching. It's all sponsored by Pepsi. Yeah. <laughs> Cops will not arrest you if you have a Pepsi. Where's all my YouTube money now? Yeah. It just, cash just starts falling on you. At the end of the thing, it's just, money just starts falling. Let it power. rain. Money's just falling over both of us right now. There's a Pepsi symbol that just shines out. Exactly. Like like the Thundercats call. It's a Pepsi symbol, and we're calling all the YouTubers together to get ready for Pepsi. The Nazis, um, the, <laughs> the Pepsi supremacy, <laughs> is here. All right. Well, I think we got to end it before we actually lose our minds. Again, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the future. Also, take the survey down below. You can actually give your thoughts about a lot of the things that we talked about. Maybe sort of so. Yeah, and I'm interested in the survey very Do much. Do it. Yeah. All so right. I See you guys later.